Okay. All right. Well, first up, uh, Jeff Bezos' yeah. flight into space. We are on the ground in Texas with a first-hand look at this out-of-this-world trip and how it's making history. Plus, I'm going to bring you the latest from here in Tokyo, including, yes, those concerns over those new COVID cases with the Olympic Games just three days away, but also the building excitement, Hoda. Mm. Opening ceremony just days away now. Looking forward to it. And I had a chance to catch up with two of the biggest stars in showbiz, J-Lo and Lin-Manuel Miranda. They have a special announcement. You what? do not want to miss. Yeah. Did Lin-Manuel <laughs> ask about me or anything? Did J-Lo? No. What? They did. No. <laughs> no. Okay. So All right. Uh, well, we'll have even more star power on the show. Actress Shailene Woodley, also Felicity Jones, they are going to join us to preview and, their new film. And we're also going to introduce you to the incredible story of the Olympic athlete Lolo Jones, all the hurdles she's had to overcome to achieve mm. success at the highest level. Savannah. Gosh, this is a good one. I know it's good every day, but this sounds great. All right, let's get going. It's time for Today in 30. We begin in West Texas, where the world's richest man just made history. Jeff Bezos and three others blasted off aboard the Blue Origin rocket. Bezos follows fellow billionaire Richard Branson, who took off nine days ago from New Mexico. NBC's Tom Costello is at the launch site this morning. Hey, Tom, good morning. Hey, Tom. Sorry, you're old. Eye. Good morning to you. Listen, this all happened at about 6.10 or so a.m. Pacific time. What an incredible morning. A great success for everybody involved. Let's walk you through how this went down. We begin with liftoff right off of the pad with the Blue Origin rocket and 110,000 pounds of thrust pulling the entire capsule up into the other upper atmosphere. And then we had separation where the capsule broke away from the rocket on its way to a very low position in space, 62 miles up. And then a beautiful breakaway after about three to four minutes of weightlessness and the capsule coming back down, parachuting back down to Earth. All in all, a picture perfect flight. This morning, liftoff for Jeff Bezos and his three fellow passengers, successfully finishing the first passenger test flight for Bezos' space company, Blue Origin. Go, Jeff, go, Mark, go, Wally, go, Oliver. You are going to space. On board, 57-year-old Bezos, his brother Mark, 18-year-old Oliver Damon of the Netherlands, and 82-year-old veteran pilot Wally Funk. On Monday, all four talked to Hoda. People who say they go into space, that they come back changed. Astronauts always talk about that. So I can't wait to see what it's gonna to do to me. You're gonna be up in space for 11 minutes. Describe how you see that in your mind's eye. Not having to, to touch or, or grab something, I can just float to it and, <laughs> and do my turns and do my rolls. And that's what I love to do. Two, one, two. Already, Blue Origin has flown 15 unmanned test flights. Today's mission meant to prove the space capsule is safe to carry paying passengers 62 miles high for three to four minutes of weightlessness, equipped with an emergency abort option as the rocket climbs, and three parachutes rather than just one as the spaceship returns to Earth. We set it out to design it for non-professional astronauts with just a little training that, and, and have them not take substantial risk. So I would put my own kids on this vehicle. You would, you feel that safe, that confident in the safety. I do, and so does Jeff Bezos. And Blue Origin has been a godsend to nearby Van Horn, Texas. Well, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> so I think it's neat that Jeff Bezos brought it to Texas, and I think it's neat that he brought it to our economy. Founded in the age of the stagecoach, Van Horn hugs I-10, its population hovering below 2,000. With Blue Origin, Van Horn is back in the crossroads of history. And touchdown. Welcome back, New Shepherd's first human crew. Yeah, a very, very successful landing here in West Texas. Let's go back to those moments, though, as we saw the, the capsule parachuting back down to Earth, slowing from going about Mach 3 down to about 16 miles per hour as it descended under those three parachutes down to a very soft landing in the West Texas desert. They have a retro rocket firing to really even cushion that landing and even more. Touchdown. And then just well, a few minutes ago, perfect touchdown. Then just a few minutes ago, all of the crew members came out of that capsule, including, of course, Jeff Bezos 
and his brother Mark and 82 year old Wally Funk that veteran of pilot who was part of the first Mercury 13 astronaut corps but never was able to fly because she's a woman and then probably the luckiest teenager in the world the Dutchman by the name of Oliver Damon all of them happy to be back on the earth hold it back to you fascinating 11 minutes all right Tom thank you so much Let's head now to Japan, where the opening ceremony of these Summer Olympics, now just three days away, the U.S. women's gymnastics facing early adversity with the news that an alternate tested positive for COVID. And now we know of another athlete on Team USA who will not be able to compete. Savannah's following all of it from Tokyo. Hey, Savannah, good morning. Hi, guys. Good morning. There's still a lot of excitement here about the approaching games. The athletes are arriving. There's the last minute rush to prepare. But the usual anticipation is being overshadowed by COVID. And already some of those who've worked for years to get to this point are out of the competition. Just three days before the Tokyo Games officially open, the pandemic is putting some of Team USA's Olympic dreams on hold. 18-year-old Kara Aker, an alternate on the women's gymnastics team, is now quarantining in a Tokyo hotel after testing positive for COVID. So far, she's asymptomatic, her parents trying to keep their daughter's spirits up from afar. Even as an alternate, there's always hope that, uh, you know, you might be a, get a chance to compete. So that keeps you going, it keeps you motivated, but now that this results has come back, the, that hope is gone. You just feel totally helpless to, to do anything except try to keep her spirits up and, yeah. you know, hug the heck out of her when she gets back. Kara was fully vaccinated before she left for Tokyo. We really went out of our way to do everything we're supposed to do to follow the protocols. NBC affiliate KSHB confirming her fellow alternate Leanne Wong is also in isolation, though she's tested negative. The station caught up with both of them at the airport on their way to Tokyo. We'll be like close by just in case something happens and we'll be able to just transfer right into there really fast. The alternates and the main competitors like Simone Biles had been practicing at the same facility here in Japan, but the alternates lined up, warmed up and trained in separate areas. The US OPC also confirming to NBC News that Simone was not in isolation or impacted by the positive case on the USA gymnastics team. There's not much that hopefully can stand in her way of an all around title. Um, and we certainly don't want it to be COVID-19. So. We'll continue to try to take these precautions, make sure not just Simone, but the entire team and replacement athletes are safe. USAG decided not to stay in the Olympic Village, instead opting for a hotel in Tokyo, where the gymnasts are now in individual rooms. USA Gymnastics says coaches have been wearing masks at all times, and the athletes have socially distanced when possible. Members of the main team do appear to have been together without masks in Tokyo, according to social media. Back home in the U.S., a heartbroken Katie Lou Samuelson announcing she will miss the games, too, after getting sick with COVID-19. The WNBA star says she was fully vaccinated and took every precaution. And on the men's side, USA Basketball announcing Zach Levine, the Chicago Bulls star, has been placed under COVID protocols, too. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning to the expression, rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. This is yes. Yes. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.
on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Well, we are back with that interview we've been looking forward to all morning long. Hody, you sat down with two of the biggest powerhouses, not just in music, just the world, yeah. J-Lo and Lin-Manuel Miranda. Hey, lucky, lucky me. It's hard to think of a bigger duo than those two, right? Well, I don't know if you guys remember, five years ago they performed on our plaza. Oh, yeah. Well, now Lin-Manuel and Jennifer are teaming up once again for a special cause. In 2016, Hamilton star Lynn manuel Miranda and music icon Jennifer Lopez graced our plaza with their charity tribute, Love Make the World Go Round, a song dedicated to survivors and victims of the Pulse nightclub shooting. Now, they're coming together once again for another special announcement. It's the five-year anniversary uh, of the Pulse tragedy. So we figured uh, on the anniversary um, to re-release the single, which we really released out of a desire to do something uh, in the face of this um, tragedy. Having that song performed on the plaza was memorable, watching everybody holding hands, watching this moment, this collective love. If you didn't feel something like you didn't have blood in your veins. The other thing that was really moving and surprising to me to reflect on, Lynn, was it was your very first time on the Today Show that day. Gosh, it's so funny because I, I also remember that was the weekend I left the show. Mm -hmm. I'd had my final performance as Alexandra Hamilton. I cut my hair off. I rehearsed all day with Jen on Sunday, and then we were on the show. I really morning. drove him crazy to do this. He was just like, I had to. I was like, you have to do this with me. You have to do this. He was like, you don't understand what's going on in my life right now. Now, this has been five years. You've had all these hits, all these moments in your life. So much has changed. Are you different, Lynn, than you were back then? I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't. I think that, you know, we, we continue to, um, you know, live in the world we live in. We continue to try to show up for our community in whichever way we can be the most useful at any given time. Okay. Um, now, Lynn, you can busy yourself with whatever business if you need to text somebody. I need to have a little girl talk with my girl just a little. You look happy. Look, I've known you for years. I am happy. You look happier. I, I, you I'm look, always happy when you see me, Hoda. No, no, no. You look happier. Look, I just have to tell you, every time I see a picture of you and Ben, I'm like, she looks happier. She looks happier. Are we happier? The song is out five years. Five years since we've done it. And I believe that that message of loving one another and coming together <laughs> and love is never more relevant than it is right now. Wait, it's me you're talking to, you know that? I know, you can call me, you have my number. <laughs> well, we tried. All right, for Lynn manuel and Jen, it's their children that are the ever constant loves of their lives. I did see a picture of you and your little coconut and it melted my heart. How are your kiddos doing? They're doing great. I have been blessed with the two most beautiful, brilliant, little beings mm. that I get to look over and help guide while they teach me about life, mm. <laughs> which is what really happens a lot. And uh, it's just, it's a joy. And Lynn, what about your kids? Oh man, my, my oldest just, um, the reading finally kicked in. He's six years old. He's a morning person. And it's, it was like 5.30 a.m. Dad, 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 dad. And now I wake up on my own and he is somewhere reading a book oh. and he is... Like, and it is very deja vu, like seeing myself at age six to <laughs> in the corner, just like soaked up in something. This dynamite duo first met on Jen's birthday years ago. Now turning 52 on Saturday, she is keeping this year's celebrations simple. Jennifer, happy birthday, early girl. It's Thank you. How, how are you they feeling? Keep coming. What? <laughs> they keep coming. These birthdays. <laughs> I don't know. How are you going to celebrate? You know, with friends. Have fun, you know, raise a glass. So what up with her and Ben? Nobody knows. Well, All right, Love Make the I World Go Round. Trying. I did try, I you did try. Uh, Love Make the World Go Round is out today. Proceeds, by the way, profits of that re-release track will go to the One Pulse Foundation. By the way, it is a song that keeps giving. And I re actually rewatched you interviewed them on the plaza with Savannah. They were here, yeah. And it was a very moving day, that song, yeah. that moment. Yeah. And you really, it was really palpable, so you felt it.
Yeah, they're great uh, together. Yeah, they are. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. See the expression? Eyes and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. This is amazing. Yes. 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 Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So... It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's say you're looking for a romantic drama. Well, we've got a movie for you this weekend. The last letter from your lover tells the story of a young journalist named Ellie who stumbles upon some mysterious love letters from the 1960s. Felicity Jones plays Ellie as she becomes entranced and invested, convincing her paper's archivist to help her search for answers about what could have happened to the couple. I like the way you tell this story. <laughs> Shailene Woodley plays one of the lovers from the past, caught up in a passionate affair with a journalist after they spend a summer together. I think I found one. Oh my God. Read out. Dearest Jay, I have spent my life avoiding complication, especially the romantic kind. Having met you, I now realize that what I was doing wasn't really living at all. I know it's hard for you to hear that I love you, but I have to say the words. I write these words with you in mind and my heart swells. So, whatever the outcome, let us arrive together. You'll find me at Postman's Park on Friday at 6 p.m. I'll be there waiting. Wow. Shailene and Felicity join us now this morning. And, and ladies, I think it's wild that, you know, this was a period piece, so you weren't ever in scenes together. And here we are on Zoom, and you're still not together. Have you guys seen each other at all? <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, we never. It was so disappointing to know we were in a film together and then realized that we didn't have any scenes where we were, we were both doing it together. So we just saw each other like ships in the night, really. We saw each other in the makeup truck a couple of times because we had a couple of days where we were both doing scenes. But it wasn't enough. You know, I, I wanted more. So hopefully next time. Yeah. Maybe. Well, the, the movie is fantastic. I think, you know, it's, it's exactly what people need right now. And Shailene, I know this is kind of your first time playing a woman from the 60s. How did you like the costumes and, and kind of playing that whole role? I mean, I loved it. Who wouldn't love wearing those costumes? Um, it was really interesting, though. I'd never I knew a little bit about the history, you know, when it came to women and their rights in the United States from that era. But I didn't know much about it in England. And so researching that and learning more about that was fascinating to me. Um, you know, if a woman wanted to get a divorce, she couldn't, there was just, there were certain laws in place that I, that I wasn't aware of. Um, and I think that was probably the most fascinating component of the whole experience for me. You know, Felicity, what's interesting is you've done uh, your fair share of period pieces, but this time out, you opted to play the contemporary role. So what was it that drew you to the character? 
I, I just loved Ellie. As soon as I read the script, she just bounced out. I I'd wanted to do something contemporary for, for a few years, and I'd been looking for something, also something that had some humor in it. I'd done a film called Shelley Girl years ago, and I'd loved the experience. And I, I loved Ellie's wit and, and, her, um, and just her personality, and it just felt like it would be fun to play. And in a story that's such a romantic, beautiful story to tell. And this is your first time producing a feature film. Uh, I always wonder when people wear a couple of hats in a production like this. Was it tough juggling acting and producing at the same time? Well, um, yeah, Shailene and I were both um, executive producers on this on this film. And it, the most amazing thing is being there right at the beginning, being able to have those conversations directly with the writer, Nick Payne, who had written a play called Constellations, which was excellent, um, which was on at the Royal Court in London. And so I sat down with him quite early on and with Augustine Frizzell, the director, and it meant that we could really chat very openly about the character and make changes. And, and just having that early relationship just makes for such a more fulfilling experience, I find. I'm sure it does. And Shailene, uh, congratulations. I want to congratulate you on your engagement to Aaron Rodgers. I was hoping to meet you at the American Century Golf Tournament last weekend. My mother-in-law said she saw you from a distance, but she didn't want to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you most excited Thank about you. when it comes to planning a wedding? I mean, honestly, that's not even a conversation we've had with the world today. Like, there's, yeah, we haven't even talked about it. So I'm not sure what will be the most exciting component of that. But you got something to look forward to. And, and Felicity, yeah. uh, you gave birth to a beautiful baby boy last year. Uh, how's motherhood treating you? I have to say, it makes you incredibly focused and efficient when you go to work. So, <laughs> I have to say, yeah, it really, um, it really um, gets gets your mind into a into a good place because you realise how important time is. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Coda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Yeah. and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Excitement is building for the Olympic Games and Team USA. And if there's one person who knows a thing or two about the Olympics and what that feels like, it is Lolo Jones. And Lolo has had her share of highs and lows as an Olympic hurdler and bobsledder. She's going to join us in a minute. But first, take a look at her story. Three-time Olympian Lolo Jones is no stranger to a challenge. Growing up poor with her father in and out of prison, she developed a drive that would earn her an athletic scholarship at LSU and eventually the title of best women's hurdler in the world. Jones was favored to win the 100 meter race at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. She was in the lead until she hit the second to the last hurdle, finishing in seventh place. It was just shocking and num numbing. Following a series of disappointing races, Jones was diagnosed with a tethered spinal cord and underwent back surgery. Not giving up, she returned to the Summer Games in 2012 and finished in fourth place. I laid it out there. I fought hard for my country. 
It was then that she took the unusual step of competing in the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi on the bobsledding team, becoming one of just a handful of athletes ever to compete in both the Winter and Summer Olympics. But once again, she fell short of a medal. Do they have enough? No. While more injuries and the coronavirus pandemic have derailed recent attempts to get back into the games, she hasn't given up the spotlight. She's appeared on several popular reality shows, including Dancing with the Stars and Big Brother. You know our one. Our one's a spot. And now Jones has her sights set on the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics and finally winning that elusive medal, which she admits would be the ultimate accomplishment. Who is cooler than Lolo Jones? No Nobody. Okay, she's written a book. It's called Over It, How to Face Life's Hurdles with Grit, Hustle, and Grace. Lolo, we are so happy that you're here. And just before we get started on the book, just a question on the news of what's going on over there at the Olympics. You know, there's a gymnast alternate who tested positive for COVID, a basketball player who tested positive. I mean, it's such a, a just kind of a, a real mixed bag of what's going on. But what have your th what are your thoughts? You've been in athlete shoes, obviously, before. I think the athletes that go on and compete in the summer games, they're going to be the toughest that win those medals because they're dealing with so many extra things that you wouldn't normally have to deal with at a game. COVID protocols, COVID testing, no fans um, to cheer you on, no family or friends mm -hmm. to watch mm -hmm. you. So those are going to be the toughest of the toughest. And I hope that they can still enjoy their Olympic experience with everything that is surrounding it. Mm -hmm. So Lolo, this book is incredible. Mm -hmm. You're, you write about your childhood, which wasn't easy. You went to eight schools in eight years. You were raised by a single mother. You moved a lot. Mm -hmm. You were hungry. What was your childhood like and did it help you form this grit that you write about? Absolutely. I mean, I had a tough childhood, uh, but some of those things are the reason why I'm an athlete in my uh, field today. So I had, uh, you know, my, my family couldn't really afford a car, so we had to walk and run everywhere. Well, little did I know that that walking and running would be essentially what transformed me into being one of the best athletes in the world. So uh, I mean, it's just amazing how sometimes the things that are seem like they're not blessings at the time turn out to actually make us stronger. In this book, I thought it was interesting. You open up about a subject that is very, very personal. And I think you said people ask you about it all the time. And you talked about your just your sexuality, being a virgin and how that is somehow deemed unacceptable uh, these days. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's crazy because that's my, I'm a Christian and those are, you know, the beliefs that I believe in that I'm going to honor my husband when I get married, but it's, I get attacked for it all the time. I remember in London Olympics when I competed there, uh, they were like, well, maybe if she would have had sex, she would have got a medal. She would perform oh, better. Nice. They, they would tell me like, shut up and just put out already. It's wow. like, no one cares. I get attacked for that all the time. And I find it the craziest thing ever because it's, you know, it's a decision I made for my husband, you know, so it's, I'm not attacking anybody in the, their beliefs, but it's funny how that gets so much ridicule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And you're standing strong in your convictions, which is awesome. You're right now training for mm -hmm. the 2022 <laughs> Olympics, which yeah, is so I'm on the, you can see the track oh, behind me. This is the bob size. Yeah. How's it yeah. going? It's going really good. So we have push championships in a few weeks. And so with the pandemic hitting, I was actually training for the Summer Olympics. Uh, but when they delayed the Summer Olympics, uh, I knew that I could no longer do both of the sports. Uh, so I turned my attention to bobsled because we qualify the same time as the Summer Olympics will be competing. So that's where I put my attention. You just finished your interview with Lolo Jones. How did that conversation leave you? Uh, we knew she was fantastic, yes. but that was multiplied by about 10 times after interviewing her, didn't you think? Yeah, I loved when she said, like, you know, she had to walk and run yes. because they didn't have a car, and that's what catapulted her into becoming this incredible athlete. I mean, I feel like you, whenever you meet someone who went through a real tough, tough, yes. tough upbringing, like you have a difficult childhood and an, a better and a little bit easier adulthood. 100%. Her yeah. book is really cool. Over it. Oh, we've got another big show for you coming up tomorrow on Today. Yeah, Joe Martin brings us another edition of Steals and Deals with everything you need around the house. All right, we can't wait for that. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good Tuesday.
Welcome to Today All Day. Over the next 30 minutes, I'll be sharing some of my favorite interviews with you. These conversations include lessons from dads across the country, inspiring stories of hope, and a few laughs along the way as well. So sit tight, get ready for more. Today All Day, right now. Somebody said to me, check out TikTok. I'm like, I am 44 years old. I am not going to roll up on TikTok to mess with these kids. All right, so what was everybody's favorite and least favorite part of the day? Meet Jose Rolone, a Brooklyn-based wedding planner and single dad of three who goes by the username NYC Gay Dab in viral videos on TikTok and Instagram. You're making me clean again? <sighs> Don't make me destroy you. Parenting three kids during the pandemic gave him the creative spark that pushed him to the platform. LGBTQ rights have been going on for quite some time. But I do think in the parenting space, we really sort of still are at the forefront of that. This was a platform to be able to highlight LGBTQ plus family here that is doing the same things that you do. Was there a conscious decision to, to try and use it to break down barriers and, and shatter myths and preconceived ideas about what fatherhood is? You know, I grew up with a father who was all about like machismo and, you know, you couldn't talk about your feelings. And so I think one of the things I wanted to highlight too on social media is as a man, you can be vulnerable. Growing up, Jose always dreamed of one day becoming the kind of dad that he wished he'd had. You had this killer smile, beautiful eyes. After marrying his husband, Tim Merrill in 2010, it seemed like he was one step closer to making that dream a reality. When and how did you decide that uh, you were ready to be parents? When Tim and I met, I think he revealed to me on the third date that he did not want to have children. And I was like, oh man, we're in trouble here, right? Because I knew that I always wanted to have kids. But something happened right after we got married and we were outside of a coffee shop. And he said to me, so I want you to know that I've been open to being open to having children. I lost it. Through surrogacy, the pair welcomed their son Avery into the world in March of 2013. Tim ended up being this really incredible father. So when we hit two months, he was walking out of the room and was holding Avery in his arms. And he's like, babe, I think we should have more children. I was like, what? And we went for it. The unexpected happened. Their surrogate became pregnant with twins. But 11 weeks into the pregnancy, while his husband Tim was on a trip in Pennsylvania, Jose got a phone call that would change everything. And I got a call uh, from the Pennsylvania uh, Police Department. I get on the phone and uh, the detective told me that he had passed away uh, the night before. Uh, and it was a heart attack uh, in his sleep. There was so much running through my head just not only having in that moment dealing with the grieving and feeling numb, but my mind also went to, we're 11 weeks pregnant. My son just lost his father. What if something were to happen to me? I didn't want to leave him alone in this world. So I made a decision in that moment to not only follow through the pregnancy, uh, but I actually announced that we were pregnant while giving my husband's eulogy at a church in front of three, 400 people. Here we are, seven years later. Now my son is eight, my girls will be seven next week. I mean, do you ever take a step back and you look at your life and you think, sweet God, what am I doing? Three children, single dad. Yeah, look, this ride has been wild. And I think we all go through phases of grieving. Nothing is permanent. I'm aware that this can shift like that. So for me, it's really vital that I stay in this moment and I appreciate it and I'm grateful and I keep moving forward with my kids in the best way that I can so that when those moments come where stuff goes down, hopefully I'll be ready.
week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. There he is, Mr. Craig Melvin. Thank you, my friend. We are really proud. He has a new book. It's called Pops. It comes out today, and it's from the heart. Mm -hmm. And we thought, what better way to get the conversation started than to have Craig sit down with some friends and dads he knows well, yeah. the other two uh, dads. Yeah, the other two. I, I invited Alan Carson up to my house for some barbecue, some beers, and some real talk about fatherhood, including what it was like for me to grow up with a dad who struggled mightily with addiction, how we reconciled, and how our relationship shaped the kind of dad I'm trying to be. There's something remarkable about the bond between a father and his son, but for some guys, the path there can be a windy one. The first line of your book, Yes Man, you remember the opening line? Yeah, he was born in a West Virginia prison. That's how the book opens, yeah, like, whoa. Now that I'm a dad, sharing the story of my own father felt like something I needed to do. It's a story of resilience, story of overcoming it's a story of, of when there's someone that you love you don't write them off what prompted it because it's 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 a pretty honest raw look at, at at a situation that a lot of people might not be willing to share it was cheaper than therapy during the pandemic <laughs> um, no I you know it was a couple of things I mean I, when I started doing the series for the show on dads I started to to meet a lot of guys like us who were extraordinary in, 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 in terms of the way they parent, but otherwise ordinary folks. And I think that led me to start to really look at the relationship I have with my dad. We've come a long way, but growing up, it was, it was hard. Growing up in Columbia, South Carolina, my mom, Betty Jo, was a constant presence for my brother Ryan and me, showering us with love and attention. We never doubted that our father Lawrence loved us too, but he worked the overnight shift at the postal service and he drank. Was he around much? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was there. He was there physically, but you know, and uh, when he worked third shift, which didn't help, uh, obviously, he'd be, so he was sleeping during the day, working at night. And the older we got, the worse the drinking got. And uh, by the time I left for college, like we were, you know, almost estranged in some ways. He was a, a black man in the South that at a tough time, yeah. a different time. Yes. He, you know, and this is something I found out during the course of the book, like my dad didn't know who his father was until he was almost a teenager. And I think it's wholly unrealistic to expect someone to be something that they haven't seen. Right. So my dad didn't, you know, he didn't have a dad. And so he did, you know, exponentially better than his father had right. done. After decades of struggling with alcohol, in 2018, my family staged an intervention. Dad agreed to enter a rehab facility in Georgia. I'll never forget my first visit there. And he gives me this hug, and I'm crying. He's crying. He gives me this, this letter that he's written. In 40 years, my dad's never written me a letter, but right. he's written me this letter. Um, and we sat, and we had breakfast. And it was just, like, it's one of those, like, I know on my deathbed, I'll remember that day. And in that moment, like, I knew, I knew it had worked. Everything changed between us. And after years of strife, we forged a real connection. What is your relationship with him now? It's the best it's ever been. Like, he'll, he'll call now, and just a random middle of the day, hey, I'll just go check on you. Has he read the book? Oh, he read, he was the first person to read it. What did he say about it? I was, I, I, it's probably the most nervous I've been, yeah. minus the, when I proposed to my wife. He said, it's all there. It's good. It's good. Yeah. That was it. That's all he said. My father's struggle and his resilience shaped me as a dad. I consider it the luckiest role I've ever had. And I've seen you as a parent, as a dad. You're a terrific dad. How did you make the jump? I mean, fortunately, along the way, I've always had men in my life who you know, I can look at and, and emulate the behavior personally and professionally, like you two. I consider both of you mentors. You, nice. And you for different reasons than Carson. 
age. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> longevity. Yes. Although, hell, I guess the same could yeah. be said for you. I Maybe. mean, Carson Daly's been in the game a long time. I have. Four kids. I've heard you talk about the relationship you had with your dad. I right. mean, you had a, a pretty, sounds like a pretty solid relationship with your dad. Yeah. Um, I have one now. I'm thankful for it now. Right. Um, I wish I'd had it, you know, 20 years ago, but what can you do? If there's anything I've learned, it's that sometimes you can make up for lost time. And seeing my own dad dote over his grandkids, there's really nothing better. We went to, to Dell's soccer game. He's on the sideline. Like, he's like coaching the team. Like, he was that into it. First 30 seconds of the game, my son hadn't scored all season. First 30 seconds of the game, dribble, 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 shoot, score. Having him experience that, right. in terms of our relationship right now, it's just, I'm so thankful for mm -hmm. it. I see these pictures of your dad with your kids. Happy birthday to and I, it makes me smile. Mm. I think about it now, and and what a what a great gift. It's the greatest gift, Al. Week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. in Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey, now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. As we've been telling you, this is a big and important morning for our dear friend Craig. A deeply personal new book that he's written, Pops, is out today. Yeah, as you guys know, I've been holding on to this story for a long time about my father's struggles, but ultimately his resiliency. So in honor of the book, I invited two of the best dads I know, Al and Carson, out to the house to have a, a candid chat about all things fatherhood. As an anchor and correspondent, I've delivered the news from studio, chased stories across the globe. But today, today I'm sharing my own story. I think the average person, when they think of Craig Melvin, they just, they think this is a guy that's never had a bad day in his life. This is a guy with like a star wattage smile, beautiful family, success. What has the reaction been from, from people who thought that they knew you and didn't realize you have this story to tell? Um, I, I think the reaction is akin to what you just said. I don't think there are a lot of people that really know me. And that's not a good thing, probably. That story in my new book, Pops, is about my father's battle with addiction and how it affected our family. My dad, Lawrence, worked the overnight shift at the post office, and when he wasn't working, he drank. This went on for decades. In 2018, we staged an intervention, and my father went to rehab. I'll never forget my first visit there. Uh, I see my dad, and he gives me this big hug. And we're not big huggers, right. we're not a hugging family. It's like, oh, dad's hugging. And he gives me this hug, and I'm crying, he's crying. He gives me this, this letter that he's written. 40 years, my dad's never written me a letter, but he's written me this letter. And we sat 
and we had breakfast. And it was just, like, it's one of those, like, I know on my deathbed, I'll remember that day. And in that moment, like, I knew, I knew it had worked. The book wasn't something I wanted to write. It's more like I needed to write it. What does it feel like to get it? It's out there now. I'm, People are reading about I'm, it. I've never been more nervous or frightened or scared or anxious. Don't you feel relieved? It. No. That's not a I thing? don't think I do relief. Wow. Um, I was relieved. Scratch that. I was relieved when my dad read it. Right. And, and my dad signed off on it. And I was like, OK. Halfway through, I realized I wasn't writing this book for like strangers. I was writing it for me. I wrote it for my dad. And I wrote it for my kids. Our family's story is one of struggle, but also faith and resilience. We never quit on my dad, and now he's an engaged father and quite the doting grandfather. Like you remember, it was dinner time when we were growing up. It's important for dads to get together, and compare notes. I'm lucky to count two great fathers from work among my friends. We all come from different upbringings and are all trying to be the best fathers we can be. I think good fathers don't come in the same size packaging yep. that we all grew up yep. thinking it did. But in the overall grand scheme of our lives and what we think of our fathers, yeah. better late than never is as good as anything you're gonna get. I was really fortunate, my dad, I really look at it, my dad was more the nurturer than my mother was. Really? Mm. My mother was, I mean, loving, you know, yeah. my dad was, Again, a hugger, yeah. a kisser. I didn't know that men weren't supposed to kiss until I'd go to some family reunions, wow. you know, and I'd go to my, my, my Uncle Champ. Hey, Uncle Champ. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Meanwhile, but, we hug and kiss. I mean, I'm crushing you probably the same way, and I know you are. Hug and kiss the kids all the time. Every second I get. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Every second. Coming up to this Father's Day, how is it different? I've developed more of an appreciation for everything than I had before the pandemic, especially like being a father because we got we all got more time with our kids right. over the past year i felt guilty i loved it so much yeah because people were out of work people were mm -hmm. dying yes but it, i was like oh, i sort of love this i get my kids yes all day, all day. we all agree yeah. the time slips by too fast in the period of two weeks i had a daughter graduate from college and another one get married and and it's a cliche but it goes by like that right i mean literally courtney was in middle school Yesterday. And then it was high school right. yesterday. And right. then, boom, she's now a married woman. My middle girl is a college graduate. Nick's going to be a senior in high right. school this fall. You're going to be an empty nester. I'm going to be When an we do this right. next year, right. you'll be right. an empty, I'm empty nester. Absolutely. And I'm sad about it. I mean, as much as, you know, I think. Come over to my house I'll and watch go, my kids. I, 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 I'd love to. I would love. They would put it up, you know. Bring, bring them over to Uncle Al. A couple years from now, we're doing this. Be Grandpa Al. Oh yeah, and and if that might happen sooner than I mean, that. If, and if there's a kid who's like lucky to have a grand, oh gosh, the, the Al Roker grandson or granddaughter or both, yeah, my God. Well, that's the greatest revenge on your kid. <laughs> yep. Is that anything that Any rules I'm gonna broken. do? Break everything. Hey, here's a five pound bag of Domino sugar <laughs> and a big spoon. Go nuts. By it's... the way, I've just noticed mm -hmm. sitting here, I've never seen. it. You've got gray at your temples. You shut the hell up. You've got gray at your, you at least you got temples. No, no, I, I got, got I do have gray. It's but, happened. Yeah. I, it's yeah. funny, it. like in the Welcome last year. It. No, it's happened in the last year. Thank you, Al. Welcome to it. Thank you. <laughs> this is over. We're you done. Know, you can wash that cut gray tape. right out, too. Oh, so I'm looking good. for gray. Yeah, well, I try to cut it up before we <laughs> come on air, but of course, Roker noticed it. Of course, of course he, he does. And in the, in the moment, mind you, it's like, is that gray? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I will tell you that it, you're going to help a lot of people mm -hmm. with this book. It's going to, uh, uh, I think, start a lot of conversations. It's the and, and I'm just really proud of you. And, you. and your dad. Because uh, you know, when we were doing that road trip, mm -hmm. uh, you were dealing with your dad uh, and getting that intervention. And I thought, I thought, this is a special guy. You know, a terrific dad, but a, a terrific son who never gave up on his father. So good. The goal is what you just said, to start some conversations and to help anyone who's struggling mightily with addiction and to help uh, families, you know, uh, reconnect, reunite if they've ostracized someone because, mm -hmm. of, because of their addiction. Amen. Yeah. You guys. And to Betty Jo. We're proud, oh, proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so good. I'm like, you guys are um, such good men. I'm glad you mentioned really Betty are. Jo. Because yeah. that book could have easily been called Pops and Betty what, Jo. What did Betty <laughs> yeah. Jo think about? Uh, we got to go to commercial. Uh, <laughs> she picked out all the pictures, though. She picked out all the pictures. <laughs>
Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Well, we're back with our good friend and today colleague Craig Melvin, who gets very personal in his new book. It's called Pops, Learning to Be a Son and a Father. In it, Craig writes about the complicated relationship he and his dad had and how they struggled for years to get to the beautiful place that they are now. And it's a journey he's celebrating. Yeah, we're going to talk to Craig in a second, who's looking right at us as we <laughs> read this intro. <laughs> oh, there's a setup spot. But first, uh, look at his very personal story. I never questioned whether he loved me. I questioned whether he liked me a lot. I mean, there were times where we were just so disconnected growing up. Growing up, Craig Melvin thought of his dad, in his own words, as a ghost, there, but not there. It impacted me more when I was younger than I fully realized. I developed a deep-seated resentment because I didn't understand why. At the time, I was you know, really active in a bunch of stuff at school, and you know, I was a good kid. Like, why wouldn't you want to be there? It wasn't until I became a journalist and doing stories on people that struggled mightily with myriad addictions. And then I started to understand what oh, that was sick. Lawrence Melvin, or Pops as Craig calls him, struggled with addiction for the majority of Craig's life. The memories became dad drinking, dad being drunk, dad passed out, or dad at work. I mean, that was kind of, that was kind of it uh, for a long time. As a society, I think, unfortunately, there is a tendency to cancel people, to, to write them off. No one wants to be bothered with the addict after the first or second try. And we, we, we did that for a while. But for me, like if, you're a, if you're a person of faith, you can't do that in good conscience. We're all climbing different mountains. And my father was climbing a mountain. It was an uphill climb Lawrence would eventually conquer. At 67 years old, Pops went to rehab and is now celebrating two years of sobriety. These days, Craig marvels at the kind of father-son relationship he now has with his Pops. I hope that I have the kind of relationship with my son 20 years from now that I've had with my dad for the past two years. Does that make sense? That's what I want. That's what I want. Uh, that's what you want. That's what you're going to get. We have a feeling, Craig. Yes. How are you? I'm OK. Thank you guys for having me. This is so nice. Craig, this book is personal. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it's very vulnerable. You mm -hmm. know, I think Hoda and I are both so proud of you because we see you as this friend and this colleague who's buttoned up and telling the news. And I can tell you're a little bit yeah. uncomfortable, nervous, <laughs> a little nervous about telling your own story. Yeah. But it is brave. So what ultimately decided, made you decide to do this? I, you know, I, a couple of things. I mean, I, I, my dad and I just got to such a good point, and he and I had some conversations about his story doing some good, and he wanted to do some good. And uh, then the pandemic hit, I had a lot more free time on my hands. So both of those things just sort of converged, and, and that's, that's, that's how we got ever, it. Did you ever think you'd see your dad go to AA? I mean, no. like you said, you knew him your whole life. No. Were you shocked when, when he when finally the intervention happened and finally he said yes to it because he still needs to say yes. Stunned, because yeah. we tried before. Yeah. I mean, we tried interventions over the years and they just didn't stick. And this time we were, the last time we did it, we enlisted a professional. Oh. And that, that, that made all the difference. We enlisted a professional and I write about it in the book. It also helps, it's funny now, it wasn't funny at the time. It also helps that when we had the intervention, he was blackout drunk. 
-hmm. The next morning I called, I called the, uh, the facility where, where he went and I checked in on him and the doctor was like, oh, yeah, he's, he's fine now. He's in our, our sober tank. Uh, he didn't remember going. Um, you know, I think the other part <clears throat> of this story is that it's a true love story mm -hmm. because it's about forgiveness. Yeah, it is. And redemption. It is. And mm -hmm. grace. Yes. And those are things that I think we, we see glimmers of them yeah. in our society, but not like as clearly as, as I think you were raised to see. It, it, it became apparent to me over the last couple of years especially that I, I had to... I had to forgive my dad, not, not for him, for me. Yeah. I had to forgive, forgive him for myself, but I also wrote this to help him understand that he's forgiven. Mm -hmm. Because for a number of years, he would, he would feel so bad mm -hmm. about the years that he missed and how he wasn't really there. And, and I wanted him to know um, while he's, you know, still with us. Well, I wanted to give him his flowers to make sure he understood <laughs> All, all is right. Well, he gave you, you gave him his flowers. He gave you that letter that you talked mm. about. That well, those were yes. your flowers. And we know that faith is like real big in your heart. You talk about it here. You feel it. We feel it from you. And how special it is there's one particular um, uh, hymn that you love. It's called "Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah." Yes. Mm. Well. New Life Baptist Church. <laughs> no, Decide, we didn't. Oh, oh, yes, we did, honey. Let's take a listen. This is my childhood to that. church. Listen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh. That's my Aunt Wanda on the far left. <laughs> it is. Hmm? That's my childhood church. Yeah. I know. And that's your aunt on the end? That's who you went with. Your grandma oh, took you there, right? Oh, I grew up. That, that, uh, you have no idea how much that means to well. me. Um, I was shaped and molded and formed uh. by, by, by that church. By that church. I sang in the choir, you know, 40 years ago <laughs> with, with my grandma in that church. And there's your Aunt Wanda. I didn't know your Aunt Wanda was, uh, in, the, was in that number. Her nickname's Boo. Well, well, we love Boo, but we love you more. So good luck um, and, and enjoy your book tour. Yeah, and just we're so proud receive of you. all the goodness you. that's yes. coming to you. You can. I know we're not supposed to be. Oh, oh, so sweet. We love you. Happy Father's Thank Day. You. Thank you. Just so sweet. Happy Father's Day. Okay. New Life Baptist Church. Yes, I know baby, that we was went for it. just for you. That all right, was some you producing. <laughs> pick up a copy of Craig's book. It's called Pops. Today.com/shop. You can scan the QR code. Just go to Barnes and Noble or your local yes. bookstore and pick it up. Welcome to today all day. All day. Today all. All day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah, things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> okay. All I gotta do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge this in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. We've got a great show for you on this Tuesday morning, including an all-day exclusive chat you can only see here. But let's kick it off with Popstart. Halsey is officially a mom. The singer took to social media to share the great news, and Carson has a first look at her bundle of joy. 
Check it out. Uh, best best time of the day. Oh. Yeah. Pop start, baby. Good to have you back, Uncle Al. Come on. Up? Luke Bryan, the country music superstar, is out on the road for his Proud to Be Right Here tour. And during a recent show in Virginia, Brian spotted seven-year-old Darcy Clare in the front row nailing every word to his song, Waves. So what does Luke do? He pulls her up on stage to sing a duet with him what? on the song Down to One. And here's what happened. Oh, yeah. we're showing you just a little bit. You gotta go back and watch them. A little timid at first. Oh, wow. Darcy opens up and yeah, then there she goes. Crushes. Boom! There she goes. Every word. Wow. By the way, the Down to Be Right Here tour continues through October. Oh. Next up, our buddy Halsey, the singer who announced their pregnancy back in January, is now officially a mom. Mm. Halsey posting this sweet photo to Instagram yesterday, breaking the good news oh. and sharing a first look at little baby Ender. Riot Ridley Aiden, along with new dad Olive Aiden, writing in the caption gratitude for the most rare and euphoric birth powered by love. Mm. Also revealing the baby was born last Wednesday, the 14th of July. Papa Olive revealing a little inside look there at the hospital room, mm. holding hands with the new mama. We want to take a second to wish them all a big congratulations. Mm. So next up, Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett, the unexpected duo, has been performing together since their 2014 duet album, Cheek to Cheek. On Monday, the Grammy-winning singers announced on social media that they will be reuniting for a final series of shows. Next month, Gaga and Bennett are set to take the stage together at Radio City Music Hall for two nights. And Gaga writing on Twitter, one last time, I'm so honored and excited to celebrate Tony's 95th birthday with him at these special shows. You may remember a few months back, Bennett revealed that he is living with Alzheimer's. And he says he's looking forward to returning to the stage. And I know people are looking forward to seeing that show. Yeah, That's going to be oh, a, special wait. a special pairing of yeah. shows. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Peppa Pig Oh, I know show. Peppa. Have you ever noticed your child all of a sudden asking to go to the loo instead of the bathroom? <laughs> No. Or demanding that you put their favorite show on the telly? <laughs> then you might be experiencing what people are referring to now as the Peppa effect. That's how some are defining this weird phenomenon where American children are all of a sudden adopting British accents from watching hours of Peppa Pig. Listen to what this parent had to say. Um, my daughter has what I would call the Peppa Pig British accent. As you can tell, I am not British. How <laughs> Daddy, I okay? I okay? <laughs> it's the struggle's oh, real. If you have kids, Peppa Pig. Wow. Put it on long enough, and they're maybe yeah, maybe it's it's like Madonna, Madonna had been all of a sudden got a British accent. <laughs> I, do not, I, I was a big fan of Peppa Pig when she was into. Well, there Thankfully, you go. she didn't Look pick up the, the accent. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up next on today talks, Al, Dylan, and Craig take a ride on the wild side, or better yet, the not so wild. After this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. USA! We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. New meaning, Hattie the Expression, Rise and Shine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Today on the third hour, the gang shares ways to help teens become safe drivers. Plus, is the traditional necktie dead? Take a look. And it's time for Overheard on 3rd, so folks may be returning to the office, but allegedly not returning wearing neckties. Really? Yeah, the, well, the Atlantic says as workplaces have become more flexible with working from home and the hybrids, they're also going to loosen up the dress codes. So, I don't know, will you give up uh, your, your no, necktie? I get a call from upstairs. I show up on TV without a tie. <laughs> so, so would you? Actually, he may not. He could probably get No, a, no, I like I feel it. like you fly in a necktie. 
I, no, I don't fly in it, but I do wear a jacket. But I feel like if I'm on TV, you know, you're supposed to. Yes, there. there's something to be said for yeah. that. Right. You know? It is a different kind of job that we right. have. Not that I'm wearing a necktie, but I, no. mean, yeah. I feel like you have to, you know, dress up for what we do. I, but a lot of people, I think, are, are just getting rid of it. Right. I know. I, I, my worry, though, is that like we're becoming so casual yeah. with 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 the dress code in the workplace. <laughs> yes. Like we're just a few years away from people showing we're up in pajamas. Slippers. <laughs> yeah, got slippers on and right. walking around in a robe. No, right. this, that's why it's called work. Work. Yeah, put how, put on a. How did you guys learn how to tie a necktie? Like my dad was, showed me. Yeah? yeah. And you remembered? Yeah. I learned in junior ROTC. Really? You were in junior ROTC? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Look at I was in junior ROTC. No, you were. I was. I went to Xavier cute. High School in Manhattan. Yeah. And it, we, we, I mean, I, I mean, look, we used to go to the 23rd Street Armory and drill. Yes. We had right. We had a right. We have a rifle range in the basement <laughs> of our school, uh, which, as it turns out. Uh, there was a gas main behind the right What? Bridge. Yeah. Um, this is before OSHA. Before yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody said. got hurt. That's yeah. right. That's why I was on the I was on the supply corps yeah. and the AV squad. Oh. Well, the yeah. AV squad didn't surprise <laughs> me. That's right. Okay. That's right. AV. <laughs> anyway, uh, another hallmark of growing up, how learning how to drive. Wall Street Journal has an article about helping teens become safe drivers with smartphones being distractions. Yeah. You need positive reinforcement. Uh, I, on the other hand, with my kids, yeah. I let driver's ed take. Oh, you paid someone to do it. Yes. You just let, you because I, bad things teacher. happen. No. Yeah. No. I learned. My dad didn't teach me how to drive. I went to driver's ed. Yeah. I had a driver's ed teacher named Crash Douglas. <laughs> that's not that his that's real a, name? That was, well, it's not his oh. real name. That's, that's what, they what called we called him. So my, my that dad. like quite the high school you had, by the way. Yeah, it was. <laughs> my dad was a mechanic, so whenever he'd have the cars, whenever he would do a test drive on the car, yeah. he would let me <laughs> get behind the wheel and. and <laughs> how old were you? 12. <laughs> Probably started around 14 because okay. he the car I eventually went on to buy as my first car was mm -hmm. a car that my dad always fixed and it was a stick shift. Oh, that's and he'd it. Take, that was it. Oh wow. my gosh, my what Toyota kind of car is that? A Toyota, a Toyota Supra, yeah. 1983 stick shift, and he'd always take me to this one development that had a hill right yeah. at the stop sign, mm. so that I would learn how to drive that car. Yeah. And then I eventually bought it for $300. What was oh. your first car? Supra. They're bringing the Supra back. Uh, I was driving a Mercury Topaz LTS. Wow. Wow. It was the LTS stood for a luxury touring sedan. Ooh. I assure you, it was not luxurious. And you didn't do any touring. I did not do any touring. <laughs> it was a hand-me-down from my uncle. It was in 1985. Who taught you how to drive it? Uh, my aunt. My aunt was my aunt Wanda. She she was the me yeah, my dad and mom didn't even they knew that one good. That way. It was not gonna <laughs> end well. No. Not gonna end yeah. well. All right. Welcome back. Despite the latest surge in COVID cases, travel restrictions in some parts of the country are easing up. Borders around the world are opening and people are getting in their summer vacations. In fact, the TSA has seen at least a million passengers a day since April. Jackie Gifford, the editor-in-chief of Travel and Leisure magazine, is here with us this morning to fill us in on the latest travel news and help us plan those last-minute summer getaways on a budget. Jackie, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Oh, good morning, Al. Good morning, Dylan. Oh, good to see you. Okay, so a lot of folks, a lot of places reopening, uh, but a lot of places have specific testing, vaccine, and curfew restrictions. I've gone online trying to find, you know, where, <laughs> where what, you and, and it's all over the place. So what do you recommend? What are the best resources uh, for up-to-date restrictions? Without a doubt, travel is back, but let's be honest, it's a little confusing. So there are definitely some resources to check out. One, first of all, if you're thinking of traveling abroad, the State Department website, go and check it out for any current travel advisories that are in place. Check local news sites in the destination that you're planning on visiting, because obviously they're, they're in touch with the situation on the ground in a way that we aren't here at tourism websites locally. Also, our website, travelandleisure.com, has tons of information about the tests that you need to take, whether you need to show a vaccine card to travel. And then your hotel. I think this might be something people might think of, but it's kind of obvious. Check with your hotel or wherever you're staying and talk to the people who work there because they might know of any mask mandates in place, indoors, outdoors, what testing requirements. The thing to keep in mind is things change every day. So just stay on top of it as best as you can and go to all those different resources. So Jackie, if uh, you are traveling internationally, the State Department said just last week they have a backlog of more than one and a half million passports application. So are, are they still expediting passports? What can you do if you want to get away? 
There is a huge backlog. That's a great point. And actually, they've said that right now the expediting service is taking about 15 weeks. So that's not what it was in times before. So I would just say this. If you're thinking of traveling internationally, don't book your flight until you've actually looked at your passport expiration date. A lot of people are going into their closets and dusting off the passport and realizing it's expired. Or they don't have that six-month or three-month validity before their final date of travel, which a lot of destinations require you to have before you get on a plane. So don't book anything until you've looked at that date. And if you want to go a little bit, um, if you want to leave the, the 48 states, leave the mainland, go to maybe perhaps Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands. You don't need a, a passport to go there. And, oh, by the way, I'll give you from firsthand experience. We found out Nick's passport had expired. We were getting ready to go. And we, if you have uh, within three, if you already have your ticket and it's within three days, you can get an appointment at the, the local passport oh. office uh, within a certain area and get the emergency passport. But mm -hmm. otherwise, you're out of luck. Uh, you're out of luck. Yeah. Uh, speaking of domestic travel, what are some of the great and affordable summer getaways here in the U.S., Jackie? There's a property that just opened out in Miami called the Good Time Hotel. So this is from <laughs> musician Pharrell Williams and restaurateur David Grutman. It's a cool, cool property, $139 a night. It takes oh, wow. up a whole city Beautiful. block. The designer, Ken Folk, did the interiors. You can see it's really colorful. They've got two pools at the Strawberry Moon Pool Club, um, an indoor-outdoor gym. The rooms have these pink rotary phones, leopard prints everywhere. I just think it's really whimsical and colorful and fun. At the pool deck, you've got an open-air bar. DJs come in to play music. They've got these private cabanas. They do yoga classes on the deck. And again, it's relatively affordable at $139 a night. Miami's been really booming throughout this year, and um, this is a, just one new addition to the scene. All right, Jackie, thank you so much. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, our countdown to Tokyo rolls on, and so does our quest to learn how to speak Japanese in just a few days. Wish us luck after this. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Yeah. talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, we're gearing up for Tokyo and getting a lesson in Japanese. Can we learn it in just a few days? We'll see. We watched Jeff Bezos and three passengers go up in a rocket ship to Blue Origin. I mean, this looked legit. I mean, nothing against Sir Richard Branson's <laughs> airplane, but this thing looked like the kind of thing we're used to watching when a rocket goes up into the air. And this whole deal took 11 minutes. But they traveled 66 miles above the Earth. Mm -hmm. How awesome was it to watch? I mean, I hope a lot of you were watching too, watching with your kids, to watch history in the making. And 
I have to say, I was a little bit nervous about the coming down part. Me too. There was something nerve-wracking about, because I guess it didn't look like a plane taking off. It exactly. looked like a rocket ship. Mm -hmm. And we got to visit with the Jeff Bezos' brother, Mark, uh, the 18-year-old uh, one named Oliver, and also Wally Funk. Wally Funk. She's the, so they had the oldest person and the youngest person. I fell madly in love with Wally Funk. Um, she was, I think the reason I loved her so much was because she joined a space program with a bunch of women in the 60s, and they said, well, maybe if you do as well as the guys, maybe you can go up. Well, they, she did as well. She was top of her class, and they didn't let her go, and it wasn't even sanctioned because by NASA. Because of her gender? Because of her gender. Mm -hmm. Then, fast forward to when they were letting women do it, she was 40, so she was too old. So it was, first it was age, um, gender, gender, then it was age, but now, today, this 82-year-old woman went up into space. I cannot wait to hear her yes. react. We didn't get to see it. We kind of heard yeah. them a little yeah. bit talking, she, and you could hear them saying, this is amazing. Like I think we heard her say, it's dark it, up here. It's dark up here, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. watching her dreams come true. Yeah, I think there's something about this group. It was just such an, a cool group of people. It was, again, the oldest, the youngest, Jeff Bezos and his brother. Um, and, you know, nine days before this, Richard Branson went up, and, they, of course, they were having this race to space kind of thing, but, you know, who cares? And they they all made it. One went up vertically, one went, one up, went up in the plane. <laughs> the cool thing is, is that we're, like, on this frontier mm -hmm. where we could be witnessing people going into space. You know, mm -hmm. we see Wally, who's always wanted to do it. She's a civilian going up and seeing something that not very many people Ew, get to see. She's a, like, she's so qualified. She's been teaching people yes. how to become astronauts for her whole life because she wasn't able to. Do you know that Blue Origin is also planning two more trips for paying passengers before the end. And I think they're actually doing one where you have to, it's not like an auction, but you fill out yeah. something and you would might you be do selected. Um, you know what's funny? I, I would have said no a yes. million times no, but there was something about watching this because it landed so gently I and agree. it seemed so delightful. Like in the beginning, I was like, never. And I was like, oh, wait, what? I sort of agree. Did something about today change my mind? Yeah. And there was no pilot, by the way. This whole thing is it's being steered electronically on the side <laughs> somewhere. So it's just so cool. it was just the four of them sitting in that capsule. And then the booster thing fell off, and then they came down on a parachute like well, 11 I, minutes. You know what? I'll always remember sitting in your dressing room watching it. Too bad we didn't have any lays. That would exactly. make things more appropriate. Exactly. Okay, you had a big interview yesterday. Oh, yeah. Well, I did get to talk to Jennifer Lopez and Lin-Manuel Miranda, but truth be told, I had to ask Jennifer about... Benifer. Benifer. You we, had to ask We about had Benifer. to ask it, so this was my feeble attempt. Look, I just have to tell you, every time I see a picture of you and Ben, I'm like, she looks happier. She looks happier. Are we happier? The song is out five years. Five years since we've done it. And I believe that that message of loving one another and coming together <laughs> and love is never more relevant than it is right now. Wait, it's me you're talking to. You know that? I know, you can call me. You have my number. Boop, 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 Did you boop. call her? Hello. Should we call her now and see what's happening? <laughs> I don't think it would be the kind of phone call she would appreciate no. on TV. Early, she's probably but, asleep. She is, she in But there are a lot of photos of them. It's not as if, you know, they're, I don't think they're hiding, obviously, because they're, they're yeah, they're, no. yeah. They seem like it looks happy. I mean, I don't know. There well, we I think it. you have to call her later is the main thing. And we can do it on three-way if you're interested. <laughs> do they still have three-way? <laughs> you can have as many people on the line as you want. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, it's time for Tuesday Tuesday where we ask for your help choosing the outfits for tomorrow's show. And this week is a little special because we turn to our male staffers. The men. All I men. I was wondering, because Anthony walked in and he goes, why am I picking your dresses? <laughs> Anthony was, uh, was on the ca on camera, whatever, and he goes, and I go, what? He goes, they want me to pick something. I was like, all right, so. I'm a little scared. I feel like everything's gonna be pleather, but maybe okay. not. Okay, first up for Hoda. What are mine, my choices? We have a, ooh, a summery white dress. Hmm. Uh, favorite of our supervising producer, Gavin, <laughs> a.k.a. Furface. I think he liked the white dress. And then a more formal black collar dress. That's by Aaron Brownlee. He's one of our great producers. And then a print 
The print was by Lee. Lee. Our director. What what did what did Rope want? Rope, Rope Bob Yeager. Yes. Hey, did Yeager. You like, did you like the the one with the I colors? Six choices. He said <laughs> he, he said you bounced. Oh, the other three are Jenna's. No, no. they were six for you and six for Six for oh, well, no. so you they didn't, bounced you your didn't choices. Pick, you didn't like pick. Like you Rope's wanted the little favorite. leather miniskirt, yeah, didn't you? I wanted it. <laughs> so he, he said the one he wanted isn't there. So sad. Okay, for Jenna, this is what our boys chose. A bright orange. I'm surprised by C for the boys. <laughs> Me too. Do the boys it really pick that? It doesn't I'm seem like I'm actually surprised by B, too. I'm kind of surprised by A. All of them. Okay, so uh, let's see. Who liked the <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Dave, Dave Alabet. Our Wait, you like, no, Dave liked Dave, the, Dave liked liked the pants and the shirt. Dave liked the pants, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, the green dress was the most popular. Dan Durkin and Sean Hickey, which green dress? Which, Can you put which it back up? Green, there is no green good. dress. Anyway, uh -oh. the choices are not reflective. Maybe it was that green and red one. Okay. Uh, the French maid outfit. <laughs> that does not look like a French maid outfit. School girl, school girl. Okay, well, anyway, okay. you guys. Let us know what you like. Go to Hoda and Jenna Instagram and comment with your vote. All right. It is time, because you know the Olympics are just a few days away. It's time for another edition of our series called... Japanese with Ease. All right. And our graphics coordinator, Japanese studies major, and our pal C is back with a few more phrases we Hi, should C. know. Hi, C. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Ohio gozaimasu. Oh, oh konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Very good. You remembered something. You like Lots how you win. just put us on the spot. <laughs> yes, we're both nervous. Bad <laughs> students. It's fine. You're fine. But well, today we get to do something that is one of my favorite things to learn about. We're learning about some food mm -hmm. things. Are you ready? Yes, we are. Okay. So in Japan, before you start a meal, you always have to start with this thing. We're going to break it up into three parts. Ita. 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 Daki. Daki. Mas. Mas. And all together, it's itadakimas. Itadakimas. <laughs> Perfect. So that means I humbly accept this food, oh. but think of it as like the Japanese version of bon appetit. Okay. So you just always say it before you start your meal. Itadakimas. Do you have to Perfect. sing it though? I feel like we don't. Yeah, really I think it's sing. better if you Do, sing it. Oh, you like, you like it? I, I mean, that's how I usually say it because I'm really excited to start yeah. eating. Yeah. Okay, so. yeah, that's true. <laughs> Starting to eat is the best part of the day. <laughs> it is, and then at the end of your meal, you also have to say something as well to say thank you for the food, and that word we're also going to break up into three parts. So it is gochi. Gochi. Go so. So. Sama. Sama. Go together. Go chiso sama. Go chiso sama. And you have to make sure that you say that at the end of your meal. Otherwise, the chef is going to think you didn't enjoy the food. See, we love you. Thank you for all But just before we go, real quickly, will you tell Mahoda how to say chip? I'm afraid she's going to want to miss her favorite thing chip. Okay, here we go. It's potato chip soup. Goodbye, face. Today Talks continues after the break. My exclusive chat with Hoda you can only see here on Today All Day. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now, it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today All Day. What a day. What a day. I mean, it was, I was just wondering, when was the last time we all collectively gathered around the television set to watch an event? And today was, of course, when Jeff Bezos and company went up in that rocket ship. It was 11 minutes, but you felt a sense of collective, like, I know, I don't know a moment where we were all connected, don't kind of. Don't you love those yeah. moments? It's funny to, like, live history with others. You yes. Know, I guess inauguration and elections, yes. but people have sides, you know? This is something that anybody could watch and think like, wow. This is so true. And I was just thinking how few things are like that Unified. anymore. I mean, the Super Bowl, you have to watch live. Mm -hmm. There are certain things you have to see as they are happening. But that 11 minutes, there was something about it that was magical because we were both scared, let's yes. be honest, that like, uh-oh, yeah. please don't let anything go wrong because of Wally Funk, <laughs> who was 82. I didn't, didn't care about I Jeff cared Bezos. about all the rest, but I especially cared about Wally. I was like, nothing can happen to her. This is the moment she's waited for yeah, she's for her whole, whole life. Yeah, a dream. Yeah, she wanted to go up in space since she was a little girl. She studied. She did all the right things. She was top of her class. She should have gone, but because of being a woman, she was not permitted. And here she is at 82. And like, kind of shows you, you too that it's never too late. Did you see that childlike kind of way yes. about her? Like she was so full of wonder. That's like one of my favorite traits in anybody. You have that. Like when something oh. happens, you're like, did you, oh my God, did you see the, like that? My but mom even right. has when that. She, your yes. mom has it and you're yes. right. When you got to speak with the four of them, yes. she seemed sort of the most like, like delighted, delighted by it. Delighted. And even when we, Richard Branson was in the studio, he too had, he was like, I, we, I, I love Peter Pan as a little boy. Like you watch. Watch the child come out again. And I think one of the most difficult things is to hang on to that because people every day can get a little bit harder, a little bit harder just because, you know, I've seen Life. that. I've done Life. that. Life, we're cynical. Uh, I know yeah. it's funny because when we were watching that incredible Annabelle 14-year-old oh playing the guitar on our, uh, on our show, uh, you said, like, don't you wish you could be 14 again? Yeah. And I feel yeah. like it kind of goes hand in oh. hand. It's like keeping that childlike yes. enthusiasm for yes. life. Like yes. not being so hard that you can't think like, this is magical. I still remember Anderson Cooper one time talking about his mother, Gloria Vanderbilt. And he said the thing he loved the most about her is that she always, she was constantly falling in love, mm. in love with a book, a movie a beautiful moment. Oh, let me show you this, Anderson. Let's see this, you know? And I think there's something about that, the curiosity that doesn't end and that you still, like, it's like it's the first time my mom would be like, oh, I had the most beautiful chocolate cake. I had to find the recipe. I went on today.com. I could never find anything there. I was looking, 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 looking. And then there it's, oh, I finally, and I got the ingredients, you know? And then it's yeah. the whole story of the wow of something so simple. It's so true. Yes. And, and you know, what like Wally is the perfect yes. example that it's never too late because it's never too late for your dreams to realize but if she had sort of given up or kind of become cynical about things because she maybe had the right to be right? she did she was turned away yes. for not real reasons yes and silly yeah they were so, like well I mean well you're a woman you can't do gender it gender and age and age, age later 40. yeah she I was mean, <laughs> So, but had she wanted to be cynical? Or, yeah, or had hardened. she become hardened, that's it. Because she would have been like, you know what, her story, she could have spent her whole life telling the story of how she was left out. But no more. Instead, she's up in space. Wally Funk. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it for this episode of Today yeah. Talks. Keep watching for more Today All Day.
first of all, I just like looking at my screen right now because I'm looking at the mothers of Olympians. Let's just, I just want to know what it feels like to be in this moment. Kim, let me start with you. It's totally amazing. I just, it's surreal. So happy that Michaela finally, finally did this and made her dream. It's awesome. We're so excited to be a part of this team. It's a great team. Gina, you got an Olympic daughter. Come on. That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing, um, especially because, you know, we've talked about this moment. Guess. Wait, wait, wait. I need to pause. Nelly, wait, I want everyone to pause for a second and look behind Nelly. I see Biles and Childs. Biles and Childs. Biles and, and Ron. Hey, this is, hey, Ron, Ron, it's Olympic moms, babe. This is Olympic moms. <laughs> oh, my God. Nelly, do you, I know you've been down this beautiful road before, but how does it feel this time around? It's still um, a surreal feeling. It's still hard to put in words and how hard to describe just how proud I am. And I am sure I'm speaking for all the mothers too. It doesn't get old. So it's not as if, um, oh, I've been there, done that. It's still, it just feels this time around even more special. Hey, Sandy, your grace. Your grace is going to Tokyo. Your grace is gonna be competing for Team USA. Do you ever just sit with that for a second and say like, wow, how did that happen? Yeah, like a million times over, especially with everything she had to overcome this year to even have a shot at coming back. And this team is just full of such amazing talent. It's unbelievable. Yang, your little girl, I know we, we, we talk a lot about your little girl's bond with her dad, but a mother-daughter bond is something that is all by itself. It is so unique. Did you ever imagine that you will be sitting here on the, at the Olympics, you'll be able to watch your daughter uh, compete for Team USA? What is it like to watch your daughter compete? I'm very excited. I mean, it's kind of surreal, like everybody says, you know. I just couldn't believe that she actually made it, you know. Like, <laughs> it is a dream of her and finally made it. It was just so excited and I'm so proud. So. Yang, was she always jumping on furniture? Was Suni always, like, flying <laughs> through the air? Yeah, jumping. Um, she's a pretty, I mean, like, yeah, she would flip and do the wrong thing, do, um, you know, cartwheels everywhere in the house. You know, like I would take her to the party and she would be flipping up the part Flipping. Too. You know, yeah. <laughs> Danielle, when your daughter was little, how did you know? How did you know that she wasn't going to be just someone who enjoyed gymnastics, but somebody who might be competing at this level? I believe she was about four years old and we were, her dad and I were watching TV and all of a sudden, whoop, there goes a cartwheel. <laughs> and we looked at each other and I said, did you teach her that? And he said, no, did you? And I said, no. <laughs> and uh, so I think we we kind of knew at that point. You knew in that minute that she that there was something different about her. Yes. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Perseverance, inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. So, Kim, I want you to 
close your eyes for a second, and describe Please, yourself what you feel like watching your daughter compete. Well, can I open my eyes? Or yeah, I yeah, open? yeah, you can <laughs> open them. Okay. Um, I don't know. This time around was really difficult watching. It was just very, very stressful. But yet, you know, you feel at times like you just want to walk out of the arena and not watch because it's just that stressful. But yet you don't want to miss it. And you just got to be there. And so you just sit there and you hope that they hit their routine. But it's really rough. Well, I don't I watched Gina move in the stands. Gina, you're moving with Jordan. You're like <laughs> over here. Now I'm over here. Like you're doing everything you can to stay in your seat. How nerve wracking is it watching your daughter compete? It's awful. <laughs> I wish there was a way to support without physically having to uh, watch it. I always say I wish I could just blink my eyes and then then know the outcome, but the outcome be good. But yeah, it's been that way since she started as a little level four and it just never changed. And, and I try, uh, Ron actually texted me um, because he watched me on TV like the following day and he was like, Gina, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I can't help it. It's just my body just reacts that way. Well, you named her Jordan after Michael Jordan. So, I mean, she was destined, don't you think? She was destined for greatness. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a slightly embarrassing that that's kind of uh, circulated, but it is absolutely the truth. I had waited for uh, one kid to come forward and my husband was like, okay, you can name her whatever you want. And I said, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, it is. By the way, I love the Biles Childs thing, Nelly, and there, there they were connected. What is it? I mean, I watched them hug. I watched uh, Simone support uh, Jordan. I just, I, I like the bond between them. Tell us about that. I believed um, in the past two years, pretty much, um, Simone has embraced pretty much all the elite gymnasts that have that are now uh, attending our gym. And as the as the time has progressed, and again, Jordan looks up to her and asks for advice. And Simone is there. You know, I mean, we're not playing. This is for real. And Simone really pushes because she pushes herself. And I see her doing the same thing too with Jordan. And that bond has just, I mean, they fight, believe me, they do fight. <laughs> and, and, and then we don't get in the way. I don't get in the way because the next minute, you know, I mean, they are hugging each other. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. just know that that's a special relationship that they have. And, and I think the expectation for each of them is very high. Jordan expects a lot from Simone and vice versa. I, I think it's great. I do too. Sandy, you're the mother of six, am I right? Yes, you are correct. You got one in the back seat with you because you needed to go somewhere. I keep well, seeing- Well, I got a, rid of the other two that were with me, so it's well, only down to one. Well, so, I keep, I keep yes. seeing a hand and a can of soda or something pop up yeah, or whatever. Yeah, he wants to be famous or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, you had six kids. I'm sure people are looking at this widescreen and saying, I want to raise an Olympian. Like, what was in the water? What did they do? So, Sandy, what, what did you do? Honestly, like we were just looking for an outlet for Grace because we found her one day trying to climb the brick on our fireplace, number one, and like trying to figure out how to sit on top of the mantle. And she was a really shy kid. And so we were just looking for a way for her to like get out and meet other people and not hang on her mom's leg all the time. And the minute she walked in the gym, she's like, I'm home. And her older sister was like, nope, not for me at all. <laughs> wow. So what, Danielle, what, what would you say is the secret sauce to raising an Olympian? Oh boy. <laughs> um, well, both her dad and I coach gymnastics. So we felt like it was important that we didn't force it on her in any way. So pretty much just letting her guide the ship and decide what she wanted to do and how far she wanted to take it. I'm kind of bumming that we won't be able to be together at the Olympics. I mean, that is breaking my heart. And I was just thinking about you guys because you've been there for every meet. You've traveled all over the country and in some cases the world. And in this particular moment, you won't be able to be present in the arena to witness this moment. And Kim, I know it was a long time coming for Michaela, but how are you dealing with that? Yeah, it's not fun. Um, but my older daughter is, we're gonna have a big viewing party the night that they do preliminaries and live stream it. It's gonna be late. I think it's gonna be like 11 o'clock mm -hmm. our time, but we're gonna have a huge party and just get a bunch of people together and 
watch. So it'll be fun, but it is just, it's very disappointing not being able to go. I don't know. It's just been interesting, but this whole COVID thing's been interesting. And for Michaela to even get where she's gotten has been amazing to us. So we're just proud that she made it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yeah. Cheers to you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning to the expression lies and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. This is amazing. Yeah. Yes. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Well, we're so proud of all of you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing your little girls in your eyes right now and it's totally blowing my mind. But since you can't be there to hold their hand in the arena, I know that you probably have a piece of advice for them. And maybe it's the same advice you've given them your whole life, I don't know. But if you just had a phrase or something for your little girl before she embarks in this moment, what would it be? Um, Nelly? What, what would you say to Simone? I definitely will tell Simone to be the best Simone. I mean, and she understands what that means. So um, whenever it's her turn to do whatever event, she needs to go out there and do her very best. You know what's funny? She always says that she's calming you down. Uh-uh, but she is. <laughs> she, she texts you and says, Mom, I'm good. And you're like, is that that's the way it works? That's how it works because I am, I get very nervous um, uh, before competition and Simone really is the one that calms me down. I mean, we would FaceTime me and tell me, mom, I'm fine. Um, I'm ready. And it's good to hear her say that, but um, she reassures me and calms me down, which is great. I love that. Gina, what about advice for your little girl before she sets out? You know, something we always uh, tell her dad has a saying that he tells her every single time. And it really sounds like a little kid saying because we started it when she was little, but he said, do your best and forget the rest. And that is, he tells her that every single time she goes out to compete and just in general life. And so we would tell her that, you know, do your best, forget everything else. You've um, earned this moment and you've worked hard for this moment. So you might as well enjoy every aspect of this moment. We're so proud, not because you're an Olympian, but because you're Jordan and, and we love you. Oh, beautiful. Kim, again for Michaela, long time coming. She just missed the team last year. I know this meant the world. In fact, when she made the team, and I remember that moment at trials, <laughs> she's like, Mom, I did it. Like, I thought that was so cool. She gave you some great words. What, what words do you have for her? Our common saying is, you got this. Hmm. And just go out there and do your best. And when she did say that saying, I couldn't even hear it in the arena. I didn't notice that till like the next day I'm watching video and I hear that and I just cried oh. several times because it meant so much to her to make this team. It, I mean, there were a lot of odds against her with everything she went through with the COVID, the pneumonia, 
and getting back to the point and it just it just broke our heart but anyway we're so happy but yeah just go out there and do it Michaela you you got this I love it raise your hand if your daughter has had or has an injury from gymnastics has had wow. everybody has. everybody has <laughs> every single person and I mean, there are, just the idea that she may have a hurt ankle or something may be bugging her, I can only imagine as a mother watching that, Yang, uh, is extra difficult. And I know that your daughter, Suni, has been through a lot. You know, your <laughs> husband is, was paralyzed from, a, from just a horrible fall. You've lost loved ones to COVID. And yet there she stands, back straight. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that she actually made it this far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with everything that is going on with, um, you know, the family, with her injury, after injury, and I'm just super proud that she actually made it. It's still kind of like, wow, you actually made it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yang, what, what advice do you guys give her before she competes? Using my husband, we do a pep talk with her. Um, she usually do that um, with us before she goes in our competitions. And um, my husband pretty much gave her like advice, but I usually just tell her, you know, go out there and have fun, you know? Just do like you always practice, do like the way you practice and just go out there and have fun. This is it, you know? Um, just have fun, enjoy, and do the best you can. Um, Cause it, it is what it is, I mean. Beautiful. She's great, yeah, so. Uh, Sandy, what advice do you have for, for Grace? Before every competition, I just tell her, you know, go out and enjoy this moment. You work so hard to get here and just enjoy the whole experience. Take it all in, enjoy your teammates, cheer for them, be like the best cheerleader and the best supporter that you can and go out there and compete for like an audience of one, compete for God, let it, you know, just do it. Show people that you really love what you do and just have fun. Yeah, an audience of one. And actually, you're probably kind of right. There will be about an audience of one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nelly, Nelly, you've been down this road before. The other parents have not. Do you have any advice for these moms as they kind of walk into this moment? I believe the best advice would be just to enjoy the moment and just be proud because, I mean, when you look up the look at the amount of kids that have gone this far our children are, are are the ones that we are watching that entire world is watching <laughs> and 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 we know that the only reason that they've gotten this far is because they've worked so hard so just cherish this time and cherish the moment and whatever the outcome i always say whatever the outcome you know just be proud of that outcome well, you guys are incredible. I can tell why each and every one of your daughters is going to be on the world stage. They've earned it and they've had support that I can see it pouring out of you. It's as if you're doing it. So I just want to say go Team USA. Thank you. Thank you. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. To the expression, rise and shine. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. All right, guys, first of all, congratulations. We have one former Olympian 
And now all you guys are current Olympians. How are you feeling today, Michaela? I'm feeling great. Are you, are <laughs> this you, is like so unreal. Are you kind of freaking out? I'm freaking out inside, yes. So crazy. I've been waiting for this moment forever. Raise your hand if you're freaking out. <laughs> Simone, you too? Yeah, I mean, it's so real. It's It's been a long journey, and me and Michaela have kind of been on it together, so I'm just happy that we're on the same team and we get to go over there and show what we have. Simone, I know you, and I've known you for a long time, and I love you dearly and deeply. When I see your emotions on display, I feel you. Yeah. I felt you today. Yeah. I yeah. felt you strong. I felt you strong when you were kind of hurting, and I felt you strong when you were feeling it. Just describe how you're feeling this yeah. time around. A little bit more tired this time around. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit older, um, so I get tired quicker. I was really happy, but I was just sad because everybody came out here to watch us, and I didn't give them my best performance, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. It is what it is. We yeah. watched you on the floor, okay? Did you see what happened after your floor routine? Yeah, they gave me a standing ovation. That was pretty crazy. The standing O didn't stop. Yeah. It kept going yeah. and going and going. It was and very I, sweet. So how is this one different for you? I don't know. I feel like going into Rio, I was kind of yeah. a kid, didn't really know yeah. too, too much, which there is beauty in going in something mm -hmm. blindsided. But now, like, I'm an adult. I know who I am, and I know what my gymnastics brings. So it's just different. I'm not sure if you were happier when you nailed a landing right. as you were when your girl, Jordan, made the team. Yeah. That hug. <laughs> that hug. <laughs> Make me cry <laughs> again. <laughs> she worked so hard, and she deserves it, and I'm just happy she got to go out there this whole entire year and prove what she's capable of. Jordan. Yes. <laughs> you're going to the Olympic Games. You, my friend, are an Olympian. Simone Biles wrapped her arms around you in that moment. And I just thought you were never going to let go. <laughs> Tell me what it felt like to know you made that team. It was honestly the most amazing feeling of my life. I already at the beginning was kind of tearing up, but I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. So I just wanted to go out there and really show everybody who I am as a person. And having her on my, by my side 24-7 and giving me encouraging words every day definitely helped. And it was very motivational. I'm very happy to have someone like her. <laughs> Y'all are cute. <laughs> Miles and Childs. Does everyone make the joke? Is that, yeah. what, that part of it? Michaela, you had a tough year, boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that you went through a mm -hmm. lot. I know you had COVID. I know you were hospitalized. Mm -hmm. I know that you wondered, like, am I ever going to get back to my performing best? Mm -hmm. Look at you. <laughs> no. I survived. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I mean, I wanted to give up so many times. I was like, I don't even know if I can do this anymore. But I feel like just having these girls in my family, having my back through it all mm -hmm. has really helped me get to where I am. Who's today, the so. oldest one? Is it Simone or is it you? It's me. Wait. We can't be back by three months. Yeah. So yeah. you're both 24. You're three yep. months older. Mm -hmm. So you no longer have the elder, elder statesman <laughs> title. Grandma yeah. has gone over there. I feel like we both share. It's like 50-50. Yeah. 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 Well, you all do kind of care for the other members of your team. Yeah, of course. And what do you get out of that, Simone? We get our youth back. I mean, <laughs> they keep us going, especially in those workouts mm -hmm. in the gym. And we've had such hard times. But seeing the younger ones come up, it's been motivational. Suni. <laughs> oh, Suni. I'm so happy for you. Thank I can't you. tell you. It just meant the world to me to watch you perform. And I wasn't sure if I was more emotional watching you or watching your dad up there. Did you feel him? I did. It took me a minute to like realize that I was like going to the Olympics. But I looked up there and I knew that he was very emotional and so was the rest of my family. Well, I loved in one of your, one of your interviews you said it's, you didn't describe it as your dream. You said it was our dream. Yeah. Um, this has been our dream for like the longest, basically since I was a baby. He's been by my side through everything, and he's gone all my competitions with me. So to have him here at the Olympic Trials with me is something that was so amazing, especially because they can't go to the actual Olympics, which really sucks. But It really does suck. Yeah. Are you all bumming about your yeah. parents not being able to go? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean so this is the last they're going to see of mm -hmm. you until you get your medals, right? Yeah. Until you come home with yeah. your medals. Well, I feel like there. there's a lightness with you guys that I don't, I mean, I remember it in Rio, but it feels even a little lighter. Like, I don't know. Definitely. It's like everyone seems to really want to have <laughs> uh -huh. fun. Yeah. And mm -hmm. is that what you're feeling, Michaela, yeah. too? Yeah, I mean, especially coming from college, like that's all we did. And so yeah. it's kind of been fun to see that more, especially yeah. since, you know, Marta's been gone and with the right. new generation. And yeah. I feel like we're just really enjoying our gymnastics. Yeah. Come awesome. on, Jade. <laughs> Jade's going to the Olympics. 
Oh my gosh, has it has that just sunk in? I mean, your dad's coaching you. You're going to the Olympic Games. Yeah, uh, I'm really excited, and I'm really glad that I have my dad to share it with. Um, we've been, he's been my coach for the longest time, and I'm just really happy that we're going to be there together. That is true. So your dad's going to be, is that your dad the only parent who's going to be there? Yeah, right, because he, he's coach. So. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, your dad's going to have to share and help yes. out with everybody. So how are you guys going to, like, make sure that you, you're straight when it comes time for competition? Because we all have our posse, our group. I would imagine, uh, Simone, that the group's going to rely on each other even more than before. Yeah. Of course, and we'll we'll have so many repetitions and I remember in Rio it was like you did so many you almost can't mess up at that point mm -hmm. um, so I'm not worried once we get over there we're set I mean this is just the beginning of our journey Michaela this dream some dreams take a long time some happen overnight and some take a while but as they always say your dream is right on time mm -hmm. so as you venture out and you realize that you're about to step into a big dream. Like what? Like how will you sleep tonight? What will you be thinking about? I don't think I'll be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I especially we'll have to get up super early, so yeah. probably no sleep. But you know, even after last Olympics, being so close to it, I'm really glad that I never gave up my dream and I kept going and have pushed myself to come back for this Olympics. And it was definitely worth it, and it paid off. And even to be here with Simone again, being like the grandmas of the yeah. team, like <laughs> I think it's definitely helped push us as well too. Because yeah. with the younger ones, like it is true, like you're older like you know your gymnastics better but it's still it's harder the older you get so yeah. these young ones have definitely pushed our buttons a little bit it's crazy to have my dreams finally come true well so. I'm I can't tell you how happy I'm for you guys and to do it in this arena it was a sellout they say that it may have been the biggest Olympic trial wow. uh, crowd ever yeah wow. and it felt like being at a concert yeah. <laughs> and it was wild so when we get to the Olympics, it, it's not going to be like that. You're not going to have that. Right. Do you think it will affect how you perform, Simone? Personally, I thrive under pressure, so I'm a little bit worried how it's going to affect me once we get over there. All right. You guys have any other thoughts as you head off to the Olympic Games in Tokyo? Uh, I think I'm just ready. I'm ready. I think I blacked out. I don't know. Yeah. You blacked so out? I'm kind of like yeah. speechless. Uh, you're yeah. speechless? <laughs> well, um, and how do you – I know not everybody got to be sitting in these chairs. Is it kind of a bummer when you see your, your fellow teammates who didn't make the, the team? I mean, it's the hardest team to make in the world, so we're all proud of everybody that mm -hmm. even made it this far. How many people can say they went to Olympic trials? So, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we're just proud of our teammates. Oh, my God, your lives changed just like that. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. Jordan, just like that. Just like Are you that. really named after Michael Jordan? I am. Okay, I just had yes. to I don't know, I thought yes. it was a rumor. I wasn't no, sure. I am. My mom had a um, big obsession over him, and um, with everything that she was going through, my dad finally said she could name a child after her famous basketball player, so that was me. <laughs> well, Chick and the rest oh of you my guys. Gosh. Oh, I know your nickname, too. You guys, we are going to be cheering you on. You may not have your moms and your dads and your friends, but you'll have us. We so have photos. <laughs> look for me. <laughs> I will be cheering true. you like, on all the way. Thank Go you. get them! Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking yeah, who's your favorite okay. character you've ever all played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the rap. Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. Hi, buddy cow. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. We've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> okay. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day.
Welcome to Today All Day. Hey, Today All Day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is saying bye-bye to boring avocado toast with two of her favorite avocado-packed recipes. Then she'll banish sad desk lunches forever with a savory turmeric oatmeal and crispy cauliflower popper. Hey guys, it's Sama. I am so excited to share two of my favorite recipes with you today. They both use an avocado and they're both for my new cookbook. So let's get hashtag cooking. First up, we're gonna make my avocado cream pasta and then next for dessert, because we always have to have it, my avocado brownies. And yes, I did say brownies. This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog. And I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. I'm just gonna slice these tomatoes in half. You can totally leave them whole to roast them if you'd like, but I'm just gonna slice them so that we can get that nice caramelization around the edges. Now I'm just gonna arrange them onto my baking sheet. I've lined this with parchment paper. These rogue ones wanna be left behind, but they won't be. Now I'm just gonna drizzle with a little bit of olive oil and season with some salt and pepper and red pepper flakes. Olive oil, some red pepper flakes, a little salt and then some pepper. We don't want to roast these tomatoes for too long, only about 10 to 15 minutes. If you do roast them for too long, it will dry out those juices, and we definitely don't want that. We want a juicy tomato. Okay, looking pretty good. Now that my tomatoes are done, I'm just gonna leave them here to hang out while I prepare my pasta. All right, very important. Please promise me you won't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? Just promise me. I'm gonna salt it, and now I'm gonna add my pasta. Straight in there. And while this pasta is cooking, I bet that I can make the sauce in the time it takes for it to be done. All you need is a blender to make this super creamy sauce. So if you've ever made a smoothie and you have a blender at home, you can make this pasta sauce. So, the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Just slicing my avocados, making sure I also don't slice my finger in there. All right, we're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. And go straight in there. I'm gonna put this. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon. Adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. A Little bit of olive oil. Just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado. Just a bit, and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that. So creamy. Did you see that? I made that pasta sauce and my pasta is done. Super quick. We love a blender recipe. Now I'm just gonna spoon my pasta out. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce, gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm just gonna really stir that in. 
going to add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just going to mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover. We love a meal prep situation. This is both of these. All right, time for me to plate this for myself. Is that too much? There's never too much. <laughs> what is a portion? <laughs> I have my tomatoes that I reserved just for this moment. Place them on top, make it look really nice, a little pop of color. And now, some freshly ground black pepper and a pinch of flaky sea salt. And that is it. But one last thing, can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. I think it's fair to say that it's time for me to eat. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula, some pasta in there. Okay. Mmm. I love myself. <laughs> it's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy. Hi friends, do you want this simple and tasty recipe from Sama right at your fingertips? Just text FOOD to 34318 and we will send it right to your phone. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So. It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. We are so used to thinking of using avocado in savory recipes, but plot <laughs> twist, they're amazing in sweet recipes too, especially when chocolate is involved. And that is where my avocado brownies come in. I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees and now I'm gonna prepare my pan. I love parchment paper, I live for parchment paper. I've already greased my pan here with some coconut oil and now I've created a little strip of paper that I can just lay in to my pan. Stick it down because the coconut oil really helps it stick. And then I've created these nice little flaps which are gonna make it super easy to remove the brownies from the pan when they're done baking. I've got great news for you and for these brownies. Everything comes together in a blender. Like you could make a smoothie, but don't. Make these brownies instead. All right. We're starting with my avocado, star of my show. I'm gonna slice this in half. Great way to use avocados when you're sick of the guacamole, when you're sick of all the savory things that you've been making with it. What's really nice about using an avocado in this brownie recipe is that it's super creamy and rich, so it actually serves as a really nice butter replacement and you cannot even taste it. I promise. All right, avocado is in. And time for the rest of my ingredients. I'm using two eggs here. And two. Crack that straight in there. 
And now I'm gonna add some creamy peanut butter. You can definitely use an almond butter if you'd like, but I love peanut butter. So we're starting with all of our wet ingredients first. Gonna sweeten this up with some maple syrup and some coconut sugar as well. And then a little bit of vanilla extract. So now I'm just gonna blend everything together here and then get to work on my dry ingredients later. I'm using an almond flour for this recipe because I think it's really nice and dense and cakey, which is gonna be really delicious with these brownies. Add my almond flour in there. Now, we're gonna use a cocoa powder. Make sure you get an unsweetened cocoa or a cacao powder. We want it to be really pure here with nothing added because we've already sweetened it with some coconut sugar and maple. Oh. Now some baking soda. Isn't it so convenient? Like, just a blender and brownies are the result? Sign me up. A little bit of salt. This is gonna be really nice to bring out that sweetness and also balance out that chocolate. And now, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna blend. You may need to scrape down the size of the blender to get it there, but just be patient with yourself and your blender. All right, we're looking really good. Now I like a little bit of a sweeter brownie, so I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. You don't have to do this if you don't want, but if you like joy and happiness, I would highly recommend it. I'm gonna reserve a few chips on top before baking so we can just get that nice aesthetic before it goes into the oven. You know how I operate. I'm gonna fold this in. How easy was this? Can we take a moment to address how easy this is? And now all I'm gonna do is transfer it into my pan, which I've prepared already. Look at that. You would never know there was an avocado in here. We put a whole fruit in these brownies and you can't even taste it, I promise. I smooth the batter out in the pan. Make sure it's evenly distributed. That looks pretty good. And now for my chocolate chips. Gonna add them on top. Less is not more here. That's my philosophy when it comes to chocolate. Less is just not more. In fact, more is more. All right, so now we're ready for the oven. and they are done. You can tell that the brownies are done when they start to pull away from the sides of the pan a little bit and a knife inserted in the center comes out clean. I'm so excited about this. And again, I love parchment paper. This is so easy. I'm just gonna lift them straight out of the pan like this. Pretty good form, huh? I'm gonna slice these, big piece for myself. I'm gonna top it with some ice cream and peanut butter because I love myself and I deserve this. It's such a clean cut too. Who needs a gym, <laughs> right? I, wanna, I need a bigger scoop. <laughs> All right. And now I'm just gonna top it with a little peanut butter drizzle. I just melted this in the microwave for a little bit so it gets nice and melty and easier to drizzle. I think this looks perfect. Pretty good. Now, last step. Just gonna top it with a little bit of flaky sea salt. Partially for taste, partially for aesthetics. I just have to take a picture of this. I need to document it. It looks too good not to. Okay. That little drip right there? Is that a joke? Okay, now I need to try this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm gonna just leave. <laughs> it's so crazy, there's no butter or oil in these brownies, but they taste so decadent and rich. Who gave me permission to do this? Avocado, 
really came through today. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are gonna be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning to the expression, lies and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. Yes. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Yeah. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. To the expression, lies and shine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Lunch is sort of that lost meal in between breakfast and dinner where you don't really know what quite to do with yourself. So in order to make your lunch exciting, I'm gonna hashtag end sad desk lunches and show you two of my favorites. First up, I'm gonna show you how to make some delicious spiced breaded cauliflower poppers and my favorite savory oatmeal with caramelized onions. To be honest, cauliflower is truly in everything these days. We see it in pizza, we see it in pasta, it's probably in ice cream, I don't want to know about it. But the best way to use cauliflower is in these cauliflower poppers because you know what? They can literally do it all. They're a great snack, a great appetizer, and a yummy lunch, especially when paired with a delicious salad. The key to the cauliflower poppers, it's in the almond meal. Make sure you're buying the one with the skin still on the almonds. I find this adheres a lot better to the cauliflower, making it really nice and crispy. I want this breading to be super flavorful on its own. I don't want it to just act as a sidekick. So I'm gonna add some spices. I'm gonna add my almond meal straight into my bowl. And then I'm adding my favorite spices, some cayenne, some cumin, and some turmeric. Finally, we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. Now, time to just whisk everything together. The turmeric's gonna give it a really nice color as well. It's gonna be really nice and yellow and pretty. It's gonna make this cauliflower glamorous. Make sure it's really well incorporated. All right, this looks really nice. Now I'm gonna whisk up some eggs. I'm using two eggs here. We need something for the breading to stick to, so that's why we're gonna make this little egg bath situation. Perfect. Twist that up. Okay, this looks pretty good. And this is my favorite part, we get to assemble. So I have half a head of cauliflower cut up into florets, and now I get to just assemble. Using my tongs, my favorite kitchen tool. Gonna stick this straight into the eggs. Roll that around nicely. You want it to be fully coated. Let any of that excess egg just drip off. 
We want a nice even coating, so that's why we're doing this. And then it's gonna go straight into our almond meal mixture. Let the breading really coat the cauliflower well. We want it all over the cauliflower into all the little nooks and crannies. And now, just gonna transfer straight to our parchment lined pan. See how easy that was? That's crazy, that was so easy. We can all do this. And now I'm just gonna repeat with all of the other cauliflower florets. Make sure you're shaking that excess almond meal off as well. We want a nice, even coating. Pop that straight on the sheet. These are sort of like cauliflower wings. So if you're plant-based, if you're vegetarian, even if you're not, it's kind of a fun and new way to get a veggie in your life. You can also totally use your hands for this. I'm being very neat and clean today. I don't want to crowd anyone on my pan here, so this is going to be my first batch. I am so excited for these to get into the oven. I'm going to bake them at 350 for about 30 minutes until they're nice and golden and crispy. Well, they're ready. Just FYI, I did flip them once halfway through baking so we can get that nice and even crispness on both sides. I really like to pair this with a variety of sauces. I like to have a sauce flight, a lot of choices here. You can really use whatever you'd like, whatever sauce suits your mood. It's also really great if you want to eat it solo. I mean, this is what I do at home, so I actually eat them straight off the pan. That's the fact. It just is this really gorgeous almond crusted exterior. Oh, it's so good. There is really nothing this cauliflower cannot do. I'll stand by that forever. Oh, I have to take a picture. I mean, come on. They're begging to be dipped and snacked on. I'm going in. So good. Mmm. That masala on the breading, it's spicy, it's flavorful, and I'm like eating a vegetable. Like, what? You never know. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Welcome to today. Future's looking right. Yeah. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Yeah. Cheers. New meaning to the expression, eyes and shine. When you think of oatmeal, you're probably thinking, wow, that's such a breakfast move. But I have to disagree because oats are actually the perfect base for anything savory and grounding and delicious. I'm gonna show you how to make my really hearty, savory turmeric oatmeal with caramelized onions, avocado, and egg and peppery arugula. It is so good. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is caramelize my onions because that's gonna take the most amount of time. So I'm just gonna dice them up right now. If I cry, it's not because the onions. It's because I'm really excited to make this, just so we're clear. I'm just gonna heat some olive oil in my pan and start on this caramelization. Adding some olive oil. 
Now that the oil is shimmering, I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Caramelizing the onions is gonna create this really nice full-bodied flavor. It's also gonna add a little sweetness. So oats themselves don't really have a lot of flavor. So by adding all of these different elements, we're really gonna create our own flavor profile here. We're gonna let these caramelize for about 15 to 20 minutes so it gets a really nice deep golden color and then we're gonna to get to work on our oatmeal. What's really great about caramelized onions is that you can make them in a huge batch, freeze them so you'll always have some on hand. I'm gonna let these hang out, get really delicious and caramelized and I'm gonna go grab some of my greens. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Can you even believe these onions? They look so good. They smell even better, if you can believe it. And now I'm just gonna upgrade them a bit with some of my favorite spices. I'm gonna add my cumin straight in here. And then my turmeric. And I really just wanna toast the spices in with the caramelized onions so they become nice and fragrant and any of that raw spice smell goes away. And finally, can't forget them, my salt and pepper. I'm gonna just roast these for a few minutes until they smell really fragrant and aromatic. And then we're gonna move on to my oats. Now it's time to cook my oats. I'm actually going to be using vegetable broth to cook them in. You can totally use water if you'd like, but I find that veggie broth makes it a lot more flavorful. I'm using rolled oats here, just by the way. Give it a little stir, bring it to a boil, and let the oats absorb all of that liquid. We're boiling. Make sure you stir the oats while you cook them. This is a really aggressive boil. The liquid is reducing, the oats are thickening up. I'm gonna reduce the heat. Now, because you have so many savory and grounding flavors here, I want something a bit fresh, a little peppery bite, and that is where my arugula comes in. I'm just gonna stir in a handful here. You can choose however much you wanna add. I like a lot of arugula, so I'm gonna kinda go for it. You just want it to wilt, and then we're gonna take it off the heat. Now, it is time for my caramelized onions. You thought I forgot about them. How could I ever forget about them? I'm gonna add them straight into my oatmeal. Give that a nice stir so everyone becomes friends. Now I'm just gonna remove it from the heat and add all of my toppings. Okay, now I'm just gonna transfer my oatmeal to my bowl. Can't leave any oats behind, that'd be so rude. I mean this color though. Gotta give some props to my turmeric. Really making that magic happen. I'm adding a few things here. I like having a lot of textural elements here, so I'm gonna add some creamy avocado. It's gonna contrast those oats really nicely. I'm gonna add an egg, soft boiled egg, and maybe some more greens. We'll see how I'm feeling. I'm just gonna slice my avocado. First, I wanna just take a moment. Okay. These are kind of fat slices. I will say I didn't intend to make them this, like, chunky, but you know what? I'm just lunching at home. This is real life. The avocado doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm gonna add my egg. I'm using a soft boiled egg here. I mean, I, do I need to say anything? I'm just not. I'm gonna let that speak for itself. Little salt. All right. Little pep. And finally, to finish it all off, some herbs. I'm using some cilantro here, but if cilantro freaks you out, you don't like it, I know it scares a lot of people, and that's okay. Like, that's totally fine. Use parsley, omit it, whatever you wanna do. I'm not gonna judge you. This looks like a pretty fat lunch. She's stunning. Um, you know who's gonna be jealous? Basically all of my friends. So I'm gonna have to send a picture to them, show them how cute my lunch is. Maybe it'll inspire them to make their own cute lunch. Okay, I think I'm ready. I'm ready to taste it. I wanna make sure I get a little bit of everything, some of those oats, the onions, the avocado, the egg. Mmm. I wanna congratulate us all because we can now say goodbye to sad desk lunches forever.
gosh, you guys. So, this photo, we were at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards, and we've actually won three times. Um, but this was the first moment when my sister and I, I would say, uh, realized how successful Sister Sister was. How would I describe Sister Sister? I would say it's kind of like your classic, fun, family comedy. It's a show that the whole entire family can sit down and watch and just have a good time and enjoy. And also, it has such longevity because the storylines are so classic and relatable to all genres, all different countries. Um, and I think that's what made the show so amazing. <gasps> oh, look at this. We were young. We were, we look like we're 12, but we were actually 14 or 15 here. Yep. Oh my gosh. This is, we were so excited. You can tell in our faces. Like we were so excited to have a show. We always had fun with those hats. They were always a part of our, um, our wardrobe. It was something that the writers and, you know, everybody wanted to put us in. I can see why. I mean, it's so cute. And we're like dressed and like. <laughs> so my character, um, I played Tia Landry and I was very, um, I would say I was very much like my character and Tamara as well. But I, I can even go further. A lot of the storylines were very much like what we were going through um, during that time when we would go into production for, for the year. Um, every year we did this and we did six years of Sister Sister. We would sit down with the producers and the writers and we would tell them how our summer was and we would tell them, you know, what we were going through, whether that was like dating or prom, you know, um, stuff that we were struggling with as teenage girls and then they would turn them into storylines. I wish we would have gotten producer credit for that. <laughs> I'm older now. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so the, so the storylines and our characters were very similar to who we are as people. Oh, this is one of my favorite photos of my sister and myself. And the reason why I like this photo is because whoever this photographer was, kudos to you, because I feel like they really caught the essence of my sister and I. And this is like us really being ourselves, you know? When you're in a photo, you know, sometimes they want you to kind of like ham it up and like cheese and smile and like get really excited, you know, which is awesome and it's great. It's another side of who you are. But this is definitely more of the real side of who my sister and I, who we are. She was always the one that would, you know, kind of do cute stuff like that. And I was always like the kind of funkier, you know, one still to this day, even when we choose our wardrobe. Working with my sister was a dream. Um, it never really felt like work. It just felt like an extended slumber party um, because she was always there, you know? Um, we would run our lines together. Um, you know, we experienced set life. We experienced um, just being actors and going through that journey as a child actor together and to be able to have a built-in partner what do I think Sister Sister showed about sisterhood? I would say it captured the ups and downs, you know, in a relationship with your sister, with, with your sister. And what I mean by that is when you have a sister or when you have siblings, not everything is gonna be perfect. You know, you have different opinions, you have different views on things. Um, you know, there's even moments where there's, you know, a little bit of jealousy. Those are like real, you know, I guess stuff that a lot of sisters go through and, you know, sister, sister definitely embody that sisterhood. But what I, what I love about it is whether there were differences at all, the sisters always came together and they would always solve their, you know, solutions that they were kind of going through at that point in time. But then not only that, I think the biggest thing or the takeaway that sister, sister, 
I feel like embodied sisterhood was the support that these two sisters had for each other. Whether they got, you know, lost somewhere, they were there for each other. Whether they were just learning how to drive and one of them got into an accident, you know, they were there for each other. If one of them, you know, was hurt because a boy hurt their feelings, they were there for each other. And I think that's what was so beautiful about Sister Sister. I think one thing that I liked about Sister Sister was it wasn't necessarily your traditional family. Um, and I feel like we still need that today in regards to story and you know television shows that are on the air. I feel like we have gotten better, but I think it's important to put a spotlight and showcase all different types of dynamics of the family, right? We were adopted and Jack A and, and Tim didn't know each other and we were all living under one roof and they weren't together. You know what I mean? They weren't in a relationship. So I was like, what is this family really doing? <laughs> what is really going on in their household? Um, so yeah, I think that's what was cool about it too. Oh gosh. Working with Jack A and Tim was incredible. Um, these are two legends, you know what I mean? And to be able to be new, because we had never done a television show before we did this, and to be able to walk on set and to have people who were supportive and guiding you through the process, telling jokes, how to tell a joke. She was so funny. She, she used to always say, Jack A used to always say, all right, T and Samira, put up your books on how to be a diva. Let's turn to such and such page. It was so much fun. And then Tim, he taught my sister and I, he said, what's what's the, uh, the, the, the key to comedy timing? And so he taught me how to be funny. Like it was all about timing. So to be able to grow up with two legends, you know, and then that they were supportive of us because we were new, they had patience. Um, was a great experience. I think what's so amazing is how people are still talking about Sister Sisters 25 years later. It is crazy how I could just be walking down the street and I could see a family that has seen Sister Sister. And what I mean by that is the mom and the dad grew up watching the show and then they had children that watched the show. So the whole family knows about Sister Sister. It's like mind blown, it's crazy. I think it's just a testimony to why Sister Sister was just so magical. And again, these are this is like years later after we had finished the show. But I think it just, you know, it, I think it shows that classic family comedies are wanted, desired, and needed and, you know, Sister Sister provided that, and it still does to a lot of families, so. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. 
Well, they say hi in Texas. Oh my God. How would I describe Teddy? Just like the best friend that everybody like wants, you know? He's just like the homie. He's just like that dude. You know? <laughs> like, Teddy's just like that dude, you know? Like, he's always got your back. He's always honest, you know? He's basically just like, I'm that dude. So like, I'm Teddy, you know? <laughs> that was stupid. Teddy's just cool. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Michelle Tanner. I believe this is the first episode. I don't know how many years ago this was, y'all. But I told Michelle that she was weird on the first day of school. And previously in this interview, I did say Teddy was honest. So, you know, he keeps it real, which every friend should. You don't want a friend to be gassing you up, telling you lies. You know what I'm saying? So Teddy was like, yo, like, you know, fall back. Like, you're kind of being weird right now. <laughs> and I remember my line was something like, you're strange. But I'm pretty sure at that time I couldn't pronounce my R's. So it sounded something like Swains. Like, you're, you're, re you're really Swains or something. <laughs> you are a strange kid. You're a strange kid? Yeah. The line was, you're a strange kid. And of course, I couldn't pronounce my R's. So I said, you're you're." a strange kid. It's like, all the, in the only way Teddy could say it. So, <laughs> yeah, I had to go to classes for pronunciation back in the day. <laughs> now I can say my R's perfectly. River, um, run. Um, yeah, I used to say, river, one. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for a one, ma. I never said that, but that's how I would have said it. My favorite scenes for Teddy. There's a lot. I always remembered enjoying when the other kids were on set, like Journey and Miko. Um, when they were on set, it was more fun because it was like, you know, like the crew was there. Goodbye. Goodbye. My favorite. Even though it was the last episode, like when he left, it was just such like a, like a, you know. You know, I had to show like the acting skills at like a very young age, you know what I'm saying? So like, I was hyped for that. You know, I had to get a touch on the serious side of Teddy, you know? Young kids have emotion too, you know? More than, maybe even more than adults. Whoa, baby, they're the happy me. <laughs> Clap a foot! But I do have a favorite scene. It was when we followed um, the, her dad to his date at the restaurant. And we hid under the table. And I remember that chocolate cake we ate was bomb. Like it was fire, fire. Definitely not gluten free, but it was fire. I remember that. Everyone was so sweet. Um, you know, I saw Bob at uh, Bob Saget at, you know, a, a, it was either a Teen Choice Awards or a People's Choice Awards a couple of years ago. And it was just like, he was so hype. Like, and I was like, bro, and we share the same birthday. So that was cool. Um, I still see Candace, still talk to her every now and then. Um, yeah, just, you know, it's kind of like a, a family. Old means first, new means second. I'm in, you're out. Excuse me. Uh, uh, Michelle's old crew. Obviously, I see Journey um, out and about. We've been doing this uh, acting thing our whole lives, so I've uh, known her and her family for quite a long time. I heard the museum has a super powerful telescope. If it's anything like my dad's telescope, all you can see is a bunch of stewardesses lying around a swimming pool. I just, Miko and I just followed each other on uh, Instagram probably la uh, maybe like last year sometime. Um, so that was cool for me. There's, there's not too many quotes that fans will say from Full House. It's just how hyped they are to see Teddy. Honestly, they're just like, yo, you're Teddy, bro. Like, where's Michelle? That's probably what a lot of people say. I'm like, I don't know, making money somewhere. <laughs> I think Full House is still so beloved now. It's just one of those classic shows. And it's, you know, such a blessing to, you know, I've been a part of a show like that. Um, I think it was the 
the family aspect of it, you know. And I think nowadays it's hard to find a show that your whole family can sit down and enjoy every week, and you know, and you're excited to run to the TV, you know. And I think that was one of those shows. And I think people, one of the best things about getting older is、um, nostalgia. You know, it brings something that brings you back to. A time when you were younger, or a time that you remember was super fun, and I just think that's what Full House does for all the all the viewers. It just brings them back, and、uh, you know, it was a show about family and like actual issues. You know, it was funny, it was cute. You know, Teddy was on it. You know, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a、uh, you know, it's just some shows are just. Those classic shows, and Full House is definitely one of them. It has been a long year, yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope: the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything, for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky, Cleveland. Our across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight: the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our across America journey here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky, Cleveland, reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. What's the most embarrassing or funniest story from your childhood? Okay, the most embarrassing thing from my childhood, I remember my brother was on this show with Patti LaBelle called Out All Night, and there was this famous group that was on the show, and they were a singing group, and their name is called Shy.、Um, and I ended up pulling out my hand out of my coat、uh, pocket, and it was a tampon. <laughs> oh God. All right, here we go. Tia Mori, welcome to the Six Minute Marathon. Hi. Hi. We're so happy to have you. Are you ready to answer some questions? I am ready. Let's do、okay. it. I've got them right here. What、okay. is one thing that you always carry in your purse? Oh, my iPhone. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one word you are guilty of using too often? I don't think I could say it on air. <laughs> oh.、Yes. Okay, didn't see that coming. Wait, this is、uh, honesty. Oh yes, exactly. By the way, we bleep the six-minute marathon. Oh can my gosh! Oh man, maybe shoot. No. <laughs> Darn it! By golly! What is your favorite family tradition? Oh, my favorite favorite family tradition would definitely have to be. Having hot cocoa with whipped cream and some peppermint sprinkles on top of the whipped cream with a handy cane on Christmas morning. Oh, can I come over? Yeah, no, I we we love it. So that sounds delicious. <laughs> What show or shows of your own do you rewatch? 
Oh my goodness. You know what I have to say? The T and Tamir reality show, it's been playing right now. So I tend to watch that. Of course, Sister Sister, that's like always playing on something. Dad? Mom? That girl has my face! All of the older ones that I've done, like in the past, you know, to kind of get back to some sort of memories in some kind of way. Is yeah. it fun to see yourself at that age? It is, it is. I mean, it, it's also um, shocking at times. <laughs> when I'm like, what were you wearing? Cause you know, it was like I was going through growing pains, but um, it is, I just, I feel so grateful when I look back at um, projects that I've done because I've, it, it kind of shows me that I've been in this business for such a long time and I'm just very appreciative. So. What's the most embarrassing or funniest story from your childhood? Oh my gosh, these are so raw. <laughs> I know. Um, I, I'll get to something shallow in a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay, wait. Um, okay, the most embarrassing thing from my childhood, I remember my brother was on this show with Patti LaBelle called Out All Night, and there was this famous group that was on the show, and they were a singing group, and their name is called Shy. Um, and I ended up pulling out my hand out of my coat uh, pocket, and it was a tampon. <laughs> oh gosh. How old were you? You must have died. I was like, oh yeah, I was like 14, 15. Oh. And they were this huge popular group. And I was like, oh, uh. I didn't pick it up. I just stared at it. You know, I was like, this is like, embarrassing. Who, this? who does this belong to? What is this doing here? <laughs> yeah, it was like the elephant in the room. You know what oh. I mean? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my I God. I hope, I'm not, I hope I'm not being too honest with these. With no, these I answers. love honesty. It's the best okay. policy. Okay. I love it, especially on the six minute marathon. Oh, okay. my gosh. Here's some easy ones. What's your favorite thing to cook if you cook? Oh my gosh, I love to cook. My favorite thing to cook would definitely have to be spaghetti and meatballs. It's something that the whole entire family likes, my kids and my husband, so. Yeah, I think my kids live on meatballs. I think yeah. meatballs might be a five day a week. It's just a classic. Right yeah, it's a classic dish that everybody loves, so. What's your hype up song right now? Oh my gosh, my hype up song has been this for a very, very long time, just because I'm a huge fan of Beyonce. Mm. And you know that uh, song, who runs the world? Girls, who yeah. runs the world? Girls, I just love, you know, women. I think women are incredible. I think we are beasts when it comes to getting things done. We're multitaskers. So whenever I'm either on the treadmill or if I'm just kind of overwhelmed, she kind of, you know, gets me right where I need to be to do what I have to do because she reminds me, you know? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> heels or flats? Oh my gosh, totally heels. Heels oh, all the way. Hey, flats. No, I mean, you know, when I was pregnant, um, I had to wear, you know, a lot of flats um, and I hated it. I would literally force my feet into my um, heels. You know, when you're pregnant, your feet kind oh. of swell. Yes. I would literally I force my feet into heels just because I love them. I think it just gives me a little bit of attitude. So. Okay, if you could be friends with a movie or TV character, who would it be? Oh, Julia Roberts, Pretty Woman. I just love her personality in, in that movie and she's, she's, she was just so much fun, you know what I mean? What is your biggest professional accomplishment so far? I would definitely have to say being a co-founder of my supplement line called Answer, mainly because it was birthed through my personal experience um, with wellness and health and just being able to inspire women and just people in general to take charge of their health and their wellness. It makes me feel so good. So I would, I would say that. You're an entrepreneur in addition to everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you a morning bird or a night owl? I'm definitely a morning bird. I used to be a night owl, but after having children, that ship has sailed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now it's, you know, I mean, this is easy for me waking up early in the morning, you know, uh, you know, because I have two kids. So, and my daughter, she's actually up right now. I don't know if you heard her crying, but <laughs> um, I'm, I'm used to it. Morning yeah. person. I didn't know if it was your kid crying or my kid crying. So. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it could have been either way, so I get it. 
Yeah. Tia, thank you so much. This is six minutes. And you're already done. See, it was fast. Wow, that was fast. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey, now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. <laughs> Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Excuse me, is this for the singing ladies who tells the truth? Being on Friends was awesome. Also, it was the Super Bowl episode, which was even more awesome because I love football. I'm like, who doesn't love the Super Bowl? Um, so that was dope. I was in a scene with all of the cast, which was really cool. I remember like chatting it up with Courtney Cox. She said I was cute. I was like, yo, that's fire. Like, what? Um, <laughs> I remember that. Um, and then I also remember how funny that scene was watching back as an adult. Cause like, I didn't get <laughs> any of what Phoebe's song was about. Sometimes men love women. Sometimes men love men, and then there are bisexuals, though some just say they're kidding themselves. <laughs> but it's just hilarious now when I ever I see that episode. The director of that episode directed mostly, pretty much all the episodes but two of Baby Daddy. So that was crazy for me, and he won an Emmy for that episode of Friends. So he always jokes with me and says, I helped him win an Emmy. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I do what I can. Michael Lembeck. But, um, so I thought that was cool. He directed me then and directed me for six seasons on Baby Daddy. So that was uh, sort of full, a full circle moment. Yeah. <gasps> She's here! <laughs> People bring up friends a lot. Uh, the, the main picture message I get on my phone of like, if someone's watching something that I'm in, it's mostly like friends. And it's just like, a lot of the times it's like, why you didn't tell me you were in friends? Or like, why you were in friends? Like, or here you go again on friends. I'm like, <laughs> so it's just, that's like, I don't know, people like taking a picture of that one and sending it to me. Um, but yeah, a lot of people bring up that episode. They play it all the time, so, but it's cool. Well, nostalgia is just awesome in general. I think in particular to the, you know, the, the 90s and the early 2000s shows, I think people just miss that sort of tone and the vibe that shows used to have that like they really don't have now. And I think it's just because like people are a little bit more smarter now. We have more access to like things. So like shows and even cartoons become to like, uh, get more realistic in a sense. And like back then it was just movie magic. You know what I mean? Like you could do whatever, you could say whatever. And again, when you get older, sometimes you miss those old school moments of your life. So, you know, nostalgic old school TV shows and movies will always, you know, hold, uh, you know, special places in people's hearts because it takes them back to wherever they were when they watched it with their family, with their friends or, so it's, it's awesome, yeah. And it's cool because a lot of them are streaming now, so people can just, you know, veg out and watch, you know, Twilight Zone all day long, you know? I don't do that.
Welcome back. So now to an exclusive Consumer Confidential on high-stakes shoplifting known as organized retail crime. NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn is here with how it impacts what we all pay. I'd never heard of this before. Yeah, right. and it's a really fascinating look this morning. We have a look into a multi-billion dollar industry from an active federal confidential informant. He used to be a key part of these heists. We also took our hidden cameras into the current black market stores where stolen goods are sold at a steep discount. Count. All of this is ultimately putting consumer savings and sometimes safety at risk. With our hidden cameras, we take you through this hair salon into the store tucked in the back. Here, those in the know can find designer merchandise deeply discounted because it's likely stolen, according to sources familiar with organized retail crime. Racks and stacks of new clothing from J. Crew, North Face, and designer denim by True Religion, brand names sold at a fraction of retail. That's right, $40 for True Religion jeans, normally $150. Son piratas o son marcas? No, son marcas originales. And the clerk tells us the jeans aren't knockoffs, they're the real deal. We also found in New York, inside a party supply store, more high-end goods. A Kate Spade handbag and diesel jeans, plus premium makeup by NARS and Too Faced. All of it discounted by as much as 70 percent. Insiders tell us these are likely stolen goods, part of an industry that cost American retailers $30 billion every year. They tell you you're going to make a great amount of money, and you can refuse. We sat down with a man we're calling John, a former member of an organized retail theft ring. We agreed to conceal his identity because he's now an informant for the FBI and NYPD. How much money were you making every day? We make it like a $2,500 each, each day. He says new immigrants were most often recruited by the rings, lured by lucrative paydays. He recalls one heist at the high-end Hermes store. What kinds of items was your crew able to walk out with? With a bag from Hermes. Worth how much? $60,000. John says he traveled with a team on carefully mapped out routes, often through several states. He says it was organized from top down, every detail scouted from the most profitable stores and malls to the best times to pull off the heists. In 15 or 20 minutes inside a mall, how much merchandise could you take? What was the dollar value? Once into a store, we can take out $20,000. $20,000? Yes. In less than 15 minutes. In like a, maybe five minutes. Did people ever notice that you were stealing all this merchandise? People, yes. Sometimes people stay quiet. Some people start to scream. It's not just clothing and accessories. The house is totally transformed almost into a warehouse. In Katy, Texas, authorities found this home filled with everything from lamps to top-of-the-line power tools, all of it stolen from home depots around Houston and nearby states. Total value, more than $1 million. Really is happening everywhere. Jacqueline McGuire heads the FBI's criminal division in New York. She showed us video taken by a task force of FBI and NYPD investigators who shut down this black market store. It looks like a barbershop. It looks like, and it is, an operating barbershop. Wherever, if you keep walking through, you enter in the back, and it's actually a retail store. You're saying everything in that store is stolen? Yes. All of that merchandise would be stolen. Tag's still on. She says the high stakes plans often play out while shoppers are in stores, potentially putting them and employees at risk. In a recent survey, 75% of retailers say they've seen an increase in organized retail crime. 57% have noticed more aggressive tactics and violence. They also say not enough is being done, with 62% saying federal law is needed to help stop the massive losses. Are we paying more as a result of all this organized retail theft? We do see some impact on the prices that consumers pay. The hidden world of organized retail crime driving up prices for everyday goods. Wow. Yeah. Now, law enforcement says it's actually word of mouth that leads customers to these black market stores like the ones we found. While officials are working to shut down these major fencing rings, consumers also can play a role, too. Thieves make huge purchases with stolen credit card information, so you should be sure to check your statements often and secure your account so you can help prevent some of this fraud. Hmm. Do stores realize this is happening, you know, more often than I ever expected? And what could they possibly do about it? This is huge. It's an ongoing problem, and stores are really trying to crack down by increasing their security measures at checkout, verifying who people are when they make returns, too. So really, for us, be patient when the clerk is asking for your ID or other ways to verify who you are. It's indirectly 
to stop things like this. It's so fascinating. I mean, you've heard of people on the street selling things. You know, there's right. a joke, mm-hmm. there's stuff in their coat pocket. But I didn't realize there was, like, a retail store. It's a tens of a $30 billion industry. And then what about the pandemic? Has that affected it for better or worse? Well, this has been going on pre, pre-pandemic, but the National Retail Federation just released some new stats. They show this has been a crime that's been on the rise since 2015. Mm. The shutdowns helped slow things down when malls and shopping centers weren't open, but they're back in business. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Crazy. Vicky, thank, thank you so much. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is a great talk. Recently furloughed from her job, Paulina Marcucci from Philadelphia was looking to make a little extra cash. So it's a great way to make some money on the side. Paulina listed her items on Poshmark, an app that allows you to sell almost anything from your closet or makeup drawer. What kinds of things are you posting? I have um, kind of a thicker cropped tee that has some nice detailing on the sleeves as well. In total, Paulina listed six items and she hopes to make 175 bucks. What's it been like to earn that extra cash without even having to leave your house? It's been great. My fiance and I are saving for a wedding. So for us, it's a great way for me to kind of get clear some things out of my closet and put that into the wedding fund. Here's how it works. Post photos of what you want to sell, write a description and set the price. Poshmark emails you a shipping label to print, and once the item is sold, just package and send it. The better the deal, the faster your item sells. Another option, Mercari. It's a marketplace that goes beyond clothes, allowing you to sell almost anything in your home, from kitchenware and toys to sporting goods and electronics. Both sites take a commission on your sales. Mercari, 10%. Poshmark, 20%. And sales are growing. Mercari says this past April, the average seller made $183, 50% more than last April. Sarah Skirball is the shopping expert for Retail Me Not. Okay, Sarah, so we're in my closet. If I'm looking for something to sell, what's the best type of item to be selling? If you haven't worn it within the last year and you have no intention of wearing it, maybe it's time to resell it. Okay, this definitely falls in that category. A few hot ticket items for women include activewear, loungewear, and even statement jewelry. How important is it to price the item correctly? So a few tips when it comes to pricing. Number one, do your research. Number two, aim a little bit higher than you expect to get, and then you have the opportunity to negotiate. And don't forget to scan your kids' closets for clothes they've outgrown. If you want cash quicker with less work, Check out Threda. Request a postage paid clean out kit. They'll send you a bag just like this. It's easy. You just put your clothes in there, shoes, handbags. They make the posting for you and they'll pay you once the items sell. Be sure to get an estimate for how much your items could be worth on the website first. And bonus, they'll donate or recycle anything they don't keep to sell. When selling or buying on these sites, protect your identity. Create an email to use for online sales use the messaging features on the app, and follow payment options within the app. Don't use other forms of payment suggested by the buyer. With a smartphone and selling strategies, you'll be able to swiftly and safely earn money on items you no longer need.
It's definitely been a nice feeling and it's pretty like instant gratification. And the good news, Paulina is now back to work after her furlough. She's also sold a couple of items. So I've been using these apps a lot, a lot long before the pandemic. And I got to say, it's a very easy way to get rid of stuff. And the money really adds up for things you're not using. Keep in mind, not all of these sites sell men's clothes. So check before you post. And just a reminder, wash the clothes and sanitize items before you receive them if you're buying. Hold up. Smart. I see all those apps. But can you just sell your clothes on like a Craigslist or Facebook, something like that? I think Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace are better for those big bigger ticket items oh. like furniture, even cars. The key there, you want to be safe. So try not to meet the people alone. If you can, mm -hmm. bring the items outside instead of having people come into your home. And cash is best. But if you are using an online payment app, you do not want to share any of your account login details. <laughs> Our Across America journey in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcast. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. As the weather warms up across the country, people are getting in gear, cruising shut down city streets and cycling through suburbs. And it's easy to see why biking is so popular. It's good for the environment, it's good for you, and it's a fun way to get outside after being cooped up. But unless you already have one of these, you may have to wait a while before pushing those pedals. Bike shops across the country now seeing skyrocketing demand and supplies dwindling. In Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is actually the only one we have right at the moment. In Portland, Oregon. The amount of business is not like anything we've seen. And in New York City. Have you ever seen a bike shortage like this before? No, never. Never, ever. In 22 years of being in the biking business, Matthew McCorkle says since the pandemic started, bikes have sold so fast, his stores are only left with high-end models. Starting price, a thousand bucks. We're looking in about two weeks, we'll be out of bikes to sell. You'll be out of bikes to sell in two weeks? Yeah. And don't be confused by all the bikes you do see. What are all these bikes? These are actually all repairs. We're trying to do the best we can to get as many people on the road as possible. John Burke is the president of Trek Bicycles, the nation's largest bike manufacturer. What kind of a spike did you see? April 12th, magically, the switch went on. And, you know, we've, we've seen at retail sales basically double. He says Trek has ramped up production at its plants in the United States, but bikes in the $300 to $800 range are built overseas, where the coronavirus has snarled production. So we're seeing people who want bikes for recreation, but are you also seeing a demand on the commuter side? You know, we, we really are, and I think the reason is, is because people aren't super comfortable getting in the subway or getting on a bus and they want to be outside. If you can't find a new bike, check online marketplaces like Craigslist for used bikes. 
If you are buying a used bike, make sure you carefully inspect two things. You want to take a look at the chain. If there's any orange, that's a sign of rust. And also, check the tires carefully for any cracking. You may have to budget a couple hundred dollars for repairs. And beware of recalled bikes with safety issues. Search the bike model online and check the Consumer Product Safety Commission website before buying. For day trips, try renting a bike or using a public bike share. If you're in a coronavirus hotspot, consider disinfecting the handles first. And if you are renting a bike and there's one thing you can adjust, make sure it's the seat height. You want it to come up right here below your hip. While the pandemic is putting the brakes on bike buying for some, the short-term hassle could lead to some new habits over the long haul. We really believe that longer term, the bicycle is a really simple solution to health issues, to congestion issues. It's a really simple solution to climate change. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Home sales are up more than 23% over the past year and the median price up more than 14% at $303,000. Buyers telling us they're struggling to purchase a home because it's so competitive. We've been to about 20 showings. Dina and Evan Finley in New York have been trying to upgrade their space for more than a year. We put in offers several times and we've been either outbid or it wasn't even looked at because the number wasn't high enough. One house I looked at had over 20 offers on it and the final price went over a hundred grand more than the asking price. Graphic designer Stella Guan got swept up in the market when she bought this house in California, then had to quickly sell, losing money in the deal. I ran out of money renovating and repairing it. These photos going viral on social media. Sean Hawksford in Montana, wearing a sign satirizing his home search. He has the down payment, the financing, the income, but not the home. What led you to wear a sign? It was kind of a last resort. My wife and I have been trying to buy a house for six months now. We've made 18 offers to this point and all of them have been rejected. We've actually had the highest offer multiple times and we just haven't been accepted because we're young and we don't have a big pile of cash. While there's no getting around this competitive real estate market, there are some questions you can ask and things you can do to make sure buying your dream home doesn't turn into a case of buyer's remorse. With me now is Jacqueline Chaconis. She is a real estate agent with SEG Realty. So Jacqueline, we're here in New Jersey. This house is for sale, but you're saying before we even get to the site of the house, there are some things we have to be doing. First and foremost, you wanna make sure that your finances are all set before you ever step foot in the house. Make sure you're pre-approved and you're comfortable with what you're spending so that when you do get into your dream home, you're able to act quickly and confidently. What about when it comes to the budget and the listing price of the home? So in this crazy market, Market, the listing price is really the starting price. So we're suggesting that buyers should look at homes approximately 10% under what they could afford. Wow. That way, when the home goes over asking, you still feel comfortable bidding up. And she says in this market, you may only get one chance to see a home before making an offer. So take notes and have your questions prepared. Okay, I'm ready to see the inside. All right, let's take you in. 
this looks amazing, but what should we really be looking for? So we always tell our buyers, you're not buying the stuff, you're buying the house. And we like to start with the basement, that's where the magic happens, and that's the most important part of the house. So now we're here in the basement, what should we be looking for down here? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is take a deep breath. Do we smell moisture? Do we smell mildew? Does it feel like there's dampness? Do we see cracks? It doesn't mean that it's something drastic, but it's good to note. If there's no basement, ask to be shown the utility or mechanical room. So you want to look at how old the AC is, how old your hot water heater is. She also says look for cracks in windows. They're expensive to replace and request maintenance records for the home. That could give you an idea of how well it's been cared for. We're panning the, the pandemic has fueled a rise in virtual home tours too. So if I'm on Zoom with a realtor, what kinds of things should I be asking them to show me? You don't want to be shy. You want to have the realtor show the house as if you were there in person. I'm going to take you right now to the patio so that I really could give you a great view of a fantastic backyard. And ask your realtor for a virtual tour of the neighborhood. Vital questions to help you find your home sweet home. And here's another tip. Multiple realtors told us in a hot market, you want to make sure you have all the decision makers there for your first home tour or visit because mm -hmm. there's a good chance you're only going to see that place one time. Mm -hmm. So you want your significant other, your children, anyone else who might have a stake in the decision wow. to be there with you because people are making bids right after that first open house. Well, that's such good advice. So what if you want to buy, um, you, should you just wait and see if this market cools for a second? It's so hard to predict, but right now economists are saying that they think this seller-friendly market will continue continue into the rest of the year with home prices to rise by about 6%. Hmm. They say the continuation of low mortgage rates and the lack of supply means that things are not going to cool off anytime soon. That's interesting. What, a, what if there is a bidding war? I feel like it all becomes monopoly money at some yes. point. You're like, I'll just go a little bit higher. I'll go a little bit higher. I mean, there has to be a limit. <laughs> totally. And you have to figure that out ahead of time before mm -hmm. you get caught up in that. Um, our realtor was saying, just stop and take a breath. That's a lot of times buyers start acting irrationally. Mm -hmm. So you want to figure out your budget well in advance, your finances, get that pre-approval letter and try to stick to your guns at that point because you don't want to get swept away. Mm -hmm. So you, you end up in a home and all of a sudden you think, oh, now you got buyer's remorse. <laughs> Anything you do? Yeah, well, that woman in our story, Stella, right? So if the seller did misrepresent the home, then perhaps you could take legal action. If it is a case where you just realize, gosh, I really don't like this house or this um, neighborhood or shoot, we paid too much, mm -hmm. your options there are limited. If you sell, then you're going to expect to take a steep loss because you got to factor in closing costs. Oh, so yeah. that's why this buyer's 101 is so important. You got to do your homework in advance so you don't land in that situation. That's good. There's also good news then for the seller because I think if you're looking yeah. to sell a home, mm -hmm. I know couples who are older and they just want to either move to to the city or move sure. to the suburbs or vice mm -hmm. versa, mm -hmm. maybe it's a good time to sell your house. Oh, you know? definitely. Yeah. This is a great seller-friendly market for sure. Oh. It's interesting though. Um, it's what millennials are looking for. Everything's got to be painted all white. Mm -hmm. It's like um, no color. It's very right. interesting from a seller's perspective what they're having to do. Mm -hmm. That's make sure you check the roof. Teeth whitener because now we can actually see one another's faces, which means people want to look and feel their best. As the country returns to work and play, the masks are coming off and consumers say it's time for an about face. We've been home for so long that we want to come out with a glow. <laughs> We're like tired of looking like we've been home for a year and a half. Gone are some of those painful experiences waiting in long lines to buy toilet paper or finding store shelves ransacked of all cleaning supplies. Instead, through the first four weeks of the quarter, toilet paper sales plummeted 28% compared to the year before. And multi-purpose cleaners dropped a more modest 12%, while teeth whitener sales sparkled, jumping 51%. And then there's cosmetics and skincare. Makeup is coming back in full force. At an Ulta beauty store in Miami, Nicole McMahon points out the top sellers like lip gloss and sunless tanners. So this right here is empty because that's sunless tanners. Yes. People want to look like they've been tan even though they haven't been outside. Yep, absolutely. The Consumer Brands Association says cosmetic spending was up a hefty 23.5% in March, year over year. When we had the mask requirements, it was all about the eyes. And now people are all about the full face and just letting themselves be themselves again. The excitement, splurge worthy for some. About $800 later, we're locked and loaded and ready to go. <laughs> Other consumer products soaring in popularity, breath fresheners, jeans, and a bit of the bubbly champagne. On the flip side, one item stores can't wash their hands of, hand sanitizers, which are now in surplus. We probably have close to $2 million left, and 
I don't want it. If anybody knows anybody that could use a lot of hand sanitizer, please give me a call. One chain in the Northeast has so much, they're practically giving bottles away. If you come into our store and you buy $10 or more of sanitizer, we'll give you a gift card equal to your purchase. America coming full circle with a fresh set of priorities. And as for clothes, it's not just jeans that are going up. Skirts are apparently flying off of store shelves. The average monthly sold out rate doubling in March year over year. And guys, swimsuits are up, shoes are up. The one thing that's not, sweatpants, which the searches for that are down 39% since December. And to reference Jerry Seinfeld, as he once famously told George Costanza when he walked in with sweatpants on, do you know the message that you're sending to the world? <laughs> I give up. I give up. <laughs> People right now are no longer right, giving up. Yes. Wave of the white flag. Oh, I forgot, I forgot Sam about Brown. that one. Yes. Sam, okay. thank Sam. you. Now the message is like, we're back. We're, we're in. Back. Come on. Yes. $800 on makeup. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Sam. With the country reopening just in time for summer, a lot of us are struggling with the urge to splurge well this morning in our Consumer Confidential, how to have fun without blowing your budget. Here to help us out, NBC News senior correspondent Stephanie Rule. Steph, good morning. Morning, Al. Hey, so I know I, I probably ordered, I don't know how much this morning before we even did this segment. Why, is it, why are we all so eager to spend cash right now? Listen, it has been a long 14 months. And now that the country is reopening and we can go back to work, we can go socialize, we're out there spending. And even though things cost more, we don't seem to mind it. I went to a dive bar the other night that had a $10 cover charge and they didn't even have toilet paper. I didn't care. We're very excited to go out. And the good news is we've saved a lot of money. For those of us who were able to work from home, household savings are up. In April, they were up double from where they were in 2019. That's pre-pandemic. They were up quadruple March of 2019. And even if we haven't saved a lot, creditcards.com just did a survey. 40% of adults say they're comfortable going into a little bit of debt if it means they're going to treat themselves right now. We need it. I'm still thinking about Steph in a dive bar. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so if you're, if you're feeling... With no the, toilet paper. <laughs> so we're feeling the urge to overspend. What do we need to know? Here's the thing. You said it. You said before, you've already bought stuff online this morning. If you know you're a big online shopper, take a breath. Maybe take your credit card off of a website so you're not automatically clicking. If you're going out to that dive bar like me, don't bring a credit card at all. Go on a cash diet. And if you are thinking about a big purchase, maybe put it on hold and give yourself 24 hours to think about it. You know that spending is emotional, especially at a time like this. Realize it and just give yourself a little cushion. Okay, so all of a sudden you kind of wake up from this this spending uh, binge, and now you're on your your hangover. What do you what do you do? How do you over, how do you correct this? Well, the first thing you have to do is give yourself a break. And if you are suddenly overspending, realize if you're overspending by a couple of bucks, it's probably not a big deal, even a few hundred dollars. Now, if you're in the thousands of dollars, it's time to reel it in, take a breath and prioritize. Say, what do I need most? If I, let's say, gained a little weight during the pandemic or lost a little weight and I need new clothes, don't just go to the mall with your wallet. Go to the mall with a list and say, here are the things I need to buy. Purchase those things and then get the heck out of there. And, and so you're, you're overspending and you realize it. How do we get back on track? What, what, what are some of the tips we need to do that? Realize what you need most, right? You might say, I don't need to buy a lot of new things, but I really want experiences. I want to go see friends or family, so I am going to splurge on that trip. But what did we do during the pandemic? We realized there was lots of stuff in our house we didn't need, so we threw it out. Don't use this time to then repurchase all of those things. And I know so many people are seeing hashtag hot girl summer. I got to get my game on. I want to go out and meet somebody. Don't do everything at once. You do not need to join a gym, buy a new outfit, get your nails done, slow it down. One step in front of the other. It is true. Money doesn't buy you happiness. However, spending is a coping mechanism. And we do have a lot to cope for. So you may want to spend some, but just don't go crazy. So in other words, you get the bang for your buck by like spending a whole night at a dive bar. At a dive bar that might charge you a $10 cover charge. Without Just bring your own tissue. toilet paper. <laughs> Stephanie Rule, it is always great to see you. Thanks so much.
places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there, into our incredible world. It feels like another lifetime. Back when flying around the world was so much easier, we took an incredible journey across Africa. Dawn over the Maasai Mara. Beneath us, roaming free, the big beasts of Kenya. On this journey, we'll get close to the animals of this vast continent. That big guy. Oof. He is telling us that he's there. He's looking right at us. From the fiercest to the fastest, to the tallest on land, and the deadliest beneath the water. And where better to begin than with a hunter as old as the dinosaur? Ancient crocodile. You don't feel nervous this close to them? They're shy, they'll go away. Sami Muneye has lived in this part of Africa all his life. He respects the rhythms of the place. Because this one seems to be looking. Well, he's already eaten. <laughs> he's already eaten? He's already eaten. <laughs> okay. We can learn from Africa, he says, how to look after ourselves and our planet. But we are so greedy. Animals are, most of them are opportunists. We are so greedy. We fly south on a journey that will take us right across the continent. First to what's been called Africa's last Eden. If the natural world is worth saving, this place is the reason why. The Okavango Delta, an inland river basin so vast it's visible from space. A watery paradise in the midst of Botswana's Kalahari Desert, best experienced in a traditional dugout called a Makora. Welcome to the wilderness. <laughs> this is Africa's last remaining wetland wilderness. Steve Boys has explored these waterways for 1,500 miles. It is a treasure but it's a very delicate one. Simple water is the source and sustenance of life, of so much life. Yes. The Garden of Eden. This is a Garden of Eden, yeah. In these waters, one of Steve's favorite animals and one of the most dangerous in the world. Aggressive, territorial, and inevitably threatened by us humans. We're going around a hippo pool. What are you going to do when the hippo comes at the Makoro? A panic. <laughs> if I start making funny grunting sounds, you can join me. It'll try and stop him. Any other advice? Don't let your mind wander. Be in the wilderness, be wild, and you'll be safe. OK. Be at one with nature. I can hear them. Oof. He's telling us that he's there. Steve's been near fatally attacked, his canoe thrown over, his love for hippos undimmed. Uh, hippos do kill many, many people every year, typically on dugout canoes like this. Okay. <laughs> They've disappeared. Yep, because we're stressing them out. These three-ton animals don't swim, they walk along the bottom, essential for keeping the waterways open. Guardians of the river, Steve calls them. They can spend five to nine minutes under there. Wow, they can sleep underwater. It is incredible to be so close to them. As the sun sets, one more breathtaking encounter. An animal we'll soon see more of. Big male lion, looking right at us. Now let's be careful, calm. He turned on us here. Roger, we'll go 10 meters further inside the space. And you'll... That is incredible. That is the best lion sight I've seen in my life. First time on, is incredible. 
it'll only be a few hours before my pulse rate returns to normal. Okay. And we're really close there. If water is the lifeblood of Botswana, we're on the way to meet a couple who are its beating heart. Husband and wife conservationist Derek and Beverly Joubert introducing us to the kings and queens of the savannah up close. The world famous filmmakers have been hunting big cats for decades, armed only with cameras. Tracking lions takes time. There's a cub track here. It's fresh. This is a couple of hours old. But after hours searching, there's a lioness. We find a pride. So there's a grandmother, a mother, and a, a cub. We've known these lions now for so seven years, I would say. Yeah. And we can track this family back about 20 years. They are your family. <laughs> well, we'd be honoured to be part of their family, at least. <laughs> But the Jew bears are under no illusions. These are dangerous, wild animals. You'll notice that while we're talking, I've got my back to the line. I'm still looking over my shoulders. Um, if I fell out of the vehicle now, they'd be on me. And so having that healthy respect for their wildness is something that we really enjoy. Climbing to the top of a hill, we watched an incredible moment. <laughs> A lioness conjoling her nervous cub to take the plunge. I was terrified of water. Anxious about the hippos and the crocs in there. These lions have had to adapt to going through water. With most lions in Botswana don't go through water at all. It's only in the Okavango. When Derek and Beverly first arrived in the Salinda Reserve, Hunting have reduced the population to two female lions. Some 30 years later, the lions number over a hundred and counting. Now Derek and Beverly must battle to preserve their life's work. They say they get their strength from their love for each other and their incredible motivation from their love for these lions. But Africa's conservationists always face an uphill struggle. Climate change, hunting, and put simply, humans, all threaten this fragile world. Across the Okavango Delta, another fearless conservationist. Brave is not the word Brad Bresterlink would use about himself, but how else to describe a man who lives in the wild? among some of the most dangerous animals on Earth for months at a time. This is your home. We're in your living room. I mean, it's not a bad place, is it? Yeah, you can go back to London if you want. <laughs> I'm staying here. He likes to get close to its inhabitants. That big guy. Maybe too close. The power of these animals makes me feel unexpectedly like an endangered species. Close encounters are what Brad lives for. He's been following this pack of wild dogs for years. And as soon as they get on the move and start hunting, they'd be very difficult to, keep, to find, keep up with. And soon, the drama of the plains is all around us. What just happened? Taina's been training. Obviously, you can pick up food from these dogs, and they're just getting fed up, so just attack it. As the sun goes down and we prepare to camp outside, we make sure we are into the wind. So that any sound travels on the wind. So even when you're sleeping, yeah. you're planning your next day, you're listening. 90% of the work at night, uh, that we do with lions is driven by what we hear at night. It's really good, actually. Fed and watered, time for some advice. 
What do I need to know? Mm, torch, mainly. Right. Yeah, just, just well. blind them. They don't really want to eat us. Yeah. <laughs> they used to... That's good to know. <laughs> Snakes, spiders. That's why I sleep on top. <laughs> you sleep up there. <laughs> and I sleep down here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Sure enough, as the stars rise in the southern sky, <laughs> predators are on the prowl. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all US adults now fully vaccinated. Alice in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Alice in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Tell me what, what animals were there last night? Big male lion doing a territorial march up and down past us. Um, a hyena a couple of times last night. Um, there must be a leopard harassing baboons. Uh, they're really performing that side. So another day begins over the delta. You know, you live in a city. Do you wake up full of optimism every morning? I'd wake up with optimism every day. Optimism in the face of adversity seems like a common theme in this part of the world. We're about to meet another iconic predator, the cheetah, and the people who are trying to help the world's fastest animal outrun its own extinction. We've traveled north to the Horn of Africa, Somaliland, surrounded by war, stricken with poverty. Do you want to come and join us? You to meet Lori Marker okay. and her so cheetah orphans. This pair, uh, just over a month old. For a while, we were calling them hairy and hairless. <laughs> this is hairless because it had less hair. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> cubs at this age should be fluffy and long manes down their back. They call cheetahs yeah. the cats that cry because of their eyes. unique facial markings. The condition of these two suggests terrible trauma. And they were starved. We're very fortunate that they've done so well. Cheetahs are more prone to stress than other big cats. Yet here they are trafficked to the Middle East by gangs and sold for thousands of dollars as pets. Lori says only 20% survive. It's important to say these are not pets. No. These are wild animals that have come from the wild. They've either been stolen from their mother, their dens, or their mothers have been killed. The lucky ones end up in Lori's arms. Cheetah Mom, you might call her. She began helping animals in 1970s California. Lori's been trying to save cheetahs ever since. She set up her cheetah conservation fund in Namibia, Southern Africa. Her success at restoring the population there would be enough for most people. You are such a good girl. But two years ago, you in the Somali so land, okay. she met Light as a Feather, Hi. a young cheetah who was rescued Hi. from wildlife traffickers ow, ow, ow. and was inspired ow. to set up ow, this second ow, sanctuary. Ow, ow. Moose Saeed, the vet who found Vicky, says she's only half the size she should be because she was so starved. When you found her, what was she like? She was like poor 
and very dehydrated. Dehydrated? Yeah, I was very sad and cried. Can you believe she survived? No, I can't. No, I can't. So I can Meet. come in with you? Yes, you can. I have a new toy, you guys. They're purring. They're purring. They are purring. I mean, this is what cheetahs want to do more than anything in the world. <laughs> wow. Is run and play. Today, Laurie has 35 cheetahs in Somaliland. They came in starved to death. Mm. Out of the group of 12, most of them were dead when they started. And These are the survivors. These are the survivors. But Laurie says the truth is, this is all just a band-aid. But obviously, we'd rather have them living in the wild. Right. They help them exercise and build their strength. <laughs> you want to try? Yeah. Okay, guys. <laughs> when you see them run, they really start to look like the cheetahs that we know and love. Yes, yes. That's what they're built to do, is to run. There are only 7,500 cheetahs left in the world. Lori's dream is one day will no longer need her sanctuaries. But she says, to make that change, we have to change. I hope that the young people take over. I hope the world takes over. The fight against climate change, the fight against poverty, the battle for some kind of peace. We're in this together. We're with, all in this together. With the cheetahs. If the cheetahs are leading the way. <laughs> you know, save the cheetah, change the world. And maybe we can. You could be forgiven for thinking these past few years that our planet is trying to tell us something. Africa is a world like no other. Its future, our future, may depend on leaving a lighter footprint. But if I never get to make a trip like this again, I'll never forget it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Our Across America journey here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there into our incredible world. Iguazu, in native language, the name means big water, a waterfall twice as tall as Niagara and miles wide. We take a boat across the rapids to one of the wonders of nature. 
This is the largest waterfall system in the world. So huge, it cuts across two nations. Over there is Brazil. This side, Argentina. Disgorging the contents of five Olympic swimming pools every second. The center of the falls, called Devil's Throw. You can feel the sheer power of the falls. Our little boat is getting buffeted around and there is a constant mist in my face. But we're still not wet enough for these guys. Not even close. To truly feel the full force of these falls, you have to get soaked. Water, our precious source of life. In Brazil, it is everywhere. And the most famous waterway of all is, of course, the Amazon. What you're seeing is not an illusion. This is where two massive rivers come together. One black, one brown. They form the mighty Amazon. The Amazon River spans the entire country, flowing more than 4,000 miles, 450 miles further than the Mississippi. The rainforest with which the river shares its name is a haven for 40,000 kinds of plants and a staggering 10% of the world's wildlife, 1,300 different birds. And among the many animals here, 3,000 species of fish. Today, we're on a fishing expedition like no other, to catch piranha. Sandro Gamma descended on his mother's side from an Amazonian tribe. He now runs tours of the ancient river. It's like magic for me. It's a magical uh, place. A magical place. <laughs> Sandro guides our boat away from the main part of the river into one of the smaller tributaries. The channel is shaded by trees and the water here is shallower. The best place to find piranha. Piranha will eat almost any meat, even, rarely, humans. To attract these underwater killers, Sandro mimics a distressed animal in the water. They like noise. They like noise like this. It's less like fishing, more like hunting. Would it help if I cut my finger and put it in the water? <laughs> I caught one. You got one, you got one. Then Sandro hooks one. Wow. Those are some sharp teeth. She's saying, come any closer, I'm going to bite your face off. <laughs> Day one over, and we've caught one fish. But a hunter always eats what he catches. She wanted to eat me. <laughs> and this is my revenge. It's your revenge, right? It tastes like cod, like kind of... Oh yeah, like freshwater fish. It tastes yeah. like a freshwater fish, yeah. actually. And there isn't very much meat here. It's, this is, I mean, it's very bony. It's day two, and we try another fishing spot. This time, I have more luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got one, I think yes. I got one. Yes! Yes, my All brother. right! <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. It looks like I wasn't the only one to target this fish. Piranhas even prey on each other. Uh, wow. I took a chunk of her to, you see, this area here. Hold it by here. Yeah. Then... Woohoo! Okay, I think you should do this. Because I don't want to cause her any more pain, honestly. Okay. And also, I don't want to cause myself any pain. Right. Our fishing expedition, somewhat successful, Sandro has a final surprise. He assures me, and I took some reassuring, there are no piranhas here. But beneath the water, we are soon surrounded by the Amazon's famous pink dolphin. Whoa, he's touching. <laughs> they're, they're, they're rubbing against our legs here. It's incredible. It's like rubber. The people here believe these dolphins are princes. Yeah, I can see that. Dolphins are, are very mythological animals for right. the Amazon. According to the indigenous legend, after midnight, he becomes a handsome boy. Right. And suddenly, he chases the girls. And when really? she, she's pregnant, she will blame on the dolphins. <laughs> she will blame on the dolphins. They are no threat to us, of course, but it turns out the fish they eat include 
piranhas. In the Amazon, every animal depends on another. The power and the beauty of this river and its inhabitants, both stunning and humbling. Next, somewhere beneath this vast canopy of green, deep in the heart of the rainforest, these colossal giants and what it's like to climb one. I am now officially really quite frightened. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. To A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Amazon, a vast two million square miles of awesome, largely untamed nature. An estimated 390 million trees. Today, I'm climbing just one. But it's a monster. How tall is the tree we're going to climb? It's 180 feet. My guide, Leo Princey, knows the rainforest well. Not too much. <laughs> It's traditions like this method of preventing insect bites. I can smell it, yeah. <clears throat> Covering yourself with dead ants. <laughs> they, they bite you. They do. They bite you while you're trying to stop other insects from biting you. And the jungle's predators. That's where a jaguar has climbed the tree. Yeah, one year ago, around. Don't think that if you want to run from a jaguar, if you climb a tree, you are safe. Not exactly reassuring. I don't think I've climbed a tree since I was a boy. <laughs> and definitely not like this. And don't look down, right? Ah, you can look if you want. <laughs> <laughs> halfway. Yeah, this is halfway? Yeah. As I sweat, Leo's nine-year-old daughter, Kenna, passes me, fearless. Not exactly how I feel. Talking to me like this is a good way to stop me from thinking about the fact that I'm hanging by a rope about 100 feet in the air. I'm increasingly nervous. I am now officially really quite frightened. <laughs> Finally, reaching the top. Okay, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down. I can't actually believe that I, I have got up here <laughs> Honestly, my legs are shaking, even though I've got this rope attached to me. But the view is just stunning. The air above the Amazon, thick with the sounds and smells of life. Look around, just to look around. The experience of a lifetime, exhilarating and a little exhausting. I think I've earned a rest. Leo can't easily relax. He's increasingly worried for his forest. His home is here in the jungle with his wife, Vanessa. Their children were born on this deck. All three are homeschooled. They playfully call their dad the guru. What he knows is that this place is increasingly threatened. Fires have raged across the forest. Logging is destroying yet more. The wonderful wildlife here threatened from all angles. But maybe one day 
we will learn to coexist and share our planet with nature. SG, it's that time again. Look who we see, our Today All Day viewers. <laughs> you know what? We're putting the meaning in Today All Day because it's night here and it's day for you, but it's still Tuesday. <laughs> we got a lot to cover. What's first, Hodes? You're still trying with Tuesday. All right, well, first up, uh, Jeff Bezos' yeah. flight into space. We are on the ground.